Good evening, everybody. Um, I'm calling the meeting to order. It is Tuesday, January 13th, 2015 at 7 o'clock p.m. This is a meeting of the Cohasset Board of Selectmen. We're at Town Hall. Our first order of business this evening is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First up is um, public comment period. If there's any members of the public who are here that wish to um, make any comments that on items not on the agenda. Anybody signed in to speak? Okay. All right, then we'll move right to the selectment update. Mark, do you want to go first? Uh, Steve? Um, I have only one, one comment. I received a, an email uh, today from the um, Mass Education Foundation. They're looking to promote a, um, uh, a career night and they're, they're reaching out to, to members of the community to participate uh, from a mentorship standpoint. That, uh, uh, that career night is March 10th, I believe. Um, uh, I'll get some further details on it and report that out at another meeting. Uh, unfortunately, March 10th is a Tuesday. So uh, in all likelihood, going into the budget season, we, we will have a meeting if we haven't already scheduled it. Um, so at the moment, it doesn't look like something somebody can participate in. But in the event that anyone in the community gets such an email, now remember that the people that it helps are uh, your children's friends, because it's, this is for high school juniors and seniors, I believe. And if it helps your children's friends, that's the networking event that your kids are going to need. So uh, participate. That's it. Okay, Karen. I just like to make note that today is Chris's one year anniversary. And, uh, what is one year anniversary? Salt. <laughs> Salt. <laughs> well, today was actually pizza. It's finance, <laughs> actually. <laughs> it's <still laughs> pizza. Yeah. And um, I would just like to say thank you very much for all the hard work and dedication that you've given to the town during your first year. And uh, thank you again for the professionalism under pressure and uh, that you've exhibited. And uh, here's to the next two years and many more thereafter. Well, congratulations. I, I just just to add on that, I, I had a on my phone yesterday. I got a LinkedIn update, and it said, "Congratulate Chris Senior on his new job." And new I was job. like, what? And I was out in the office. <laughs> <laughs> so they're a little behind the times. So anyway, yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> mine said anniversary. No, mine said new, new job, job. And I had a panic attack. Down, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was an April Fool's. Not really. Yeah, exactly. A little early. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you, too, Chris. I just want to talk further on CEF. I was at the school board meeting, and uh, both the PSO gave a thousand plus dollars, fifteen hundred, for programs, but the CEAF gave sixty-six thousand dollars for many, many programs for schools. And uh, in regards to career night. Years ago, my children in school and later, in the seventh and eighth grade, we used to have professionals in the town uh, speak to the seventh and eighth graders of different professions before they went into ninth grade. And I, I felt, I, I feel that that's good that CEF is doing this. They're a very good organization. And uh, also, I want to ask one question. Uh, we, uh, when we had the um, triathlon, we had uh, a discussion, we had the children's triathlon, and he said he'd bring them back later. I've had many calls for that, I mean, which is on a Saturday morning and very good. And I'm wondering when we'll get that back. We're probably gonna do that right now. I have it kind of queued up for um, February 3rd. Yeah. But right. it's, I, I've been in touch with Bill and we'll yeah. re okay. well, introduce that. Like it. And I think it's good to have kids. Absolutely. If I had that. had that when I was younger, which I did all those disciplines, it would have been very nice. Oh, terrific. It will be on a very soon yeah. um, upcoming agenda. Yeah. And I also want to say I went to uh, Baker's inauguration party. Mm -hmm. 
between four and five thousand people, and there were Democrats to Republicans. Young people, old Cats people. sleeping with dogs. What about that? <laughs> well, practically that. I mean, there were people dressed to the nines and others that had, you know, just kept up to sleep. It was a very diverse group, and they had a wonderful entertainment. It was the most low-key thing that I've been to. And uh, I mean, no matter who is elected governor, one should be happy. We're back on track again. No more politics. So, very good. And also, the Historical Society had a fundraiser Saturday night. They had the Downton Avenue, Abbey, a clothing and artifacts as an exhibit, which was wonderful. And they had this, and people were supposed to dress like that. Forgive, forgive me, I have a question. My daughter wants to volunteer in the Historical Society. Well, that's fine. Who should she talk to? I can, uh, you can go down there. Um, um, the uh, uh, Kathy O'Malley is the president, okay. and also, if you go down to the, uh, they're open to four o'clock. Um, Lynn uh, DiGiacomo is the is the director uh, down there. Okay. And other people are there, and uh, but Kathy is probably the main one you should. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. That's it. Um, just really quickly um, on the on, up to, on the inauguration, I was going into Boston. Um, that same evening for a workshop and it was probably the worst surface traffic I've ever been in in Boston and as I was sitting there for about 45 minutes to go a block and a half um, they announced the uh, that Boston was got the bid for the uh, Olympics so it should be very interesting to see how yeah. how that plays out um, just a couple of things that we had in front of us um, this evening one is just a reminder that real estate taxes are due on February 2nd, um, and um, which is a couple weeks away, but get ready. Um, the, and remember that you're not necessarily gonna get something in the mail, you've already gotten that in the, in the second tear off. Um, um, you should have held over from the last time they sent the bill out. Um, um, also, for those of you um, on committees and boards who need to post a meeting for next week, um, just a reminder that Monday's a holiday, so um, you would, um, if you're meeting on Tuesday, you'll have to post by close of business on Thursday of this week, which we will do because we do have a meeting next week. And then lastly, um, the Cohasset Clergy and Cohasset Diversity Committee We'll hold the 13th annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. breakfast on Monday morning at 9 a.m. at the Second Congregational Church of Cohasset in Bates Hall, right across from the Common. Um, there will be a breakfast, and Boston City Councilor Tito Jackson will be the honored guest and keynote speaker. Um, it is $5 a person or $15 per family. So, and it's a really terrific um, event. So. We'll move on to the agenda. Um, it's, it's a finance evening, so happy finances, everybody. Uh, first on the agenda is a um, our annual FY14, which is the previous fiscal year, comprehensive annual financial report, our CAFR. Um, it'll be presented by our, audit, our auditor, Jim Powers of Powers and Sullivan. So I'm gonna ask him to come on up. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. If you don't mind just introducing yourself yep. for the record. Okay. Yes. My name is uh, Jim Powers from Powers and Sullivan. I'm a partner on the uh, engagement for the town. Uh, I'm here to present the results of the fiscal year 2014 audit. Uh, so just jump right into it? Or jump okay. right away. Okay. Yep. Um, <clears throat> there are three documents that you would have. One is a management letter. One is the comprehensive annual financial report and then another one reports on federal awards. Uh, I'd like to take the easiest one first to uh, go through. Uh, and again, we're going to take questions directly through this year. It's up to you, obviously, how we present. But a lot of times it's easy to take questions as I'm going over the report or at the end of that particular report to address any issues you may have. So we're going to start off with the management letter, is that correct? No, we're going to start off with the reports and federal awards. There we go. That's the easier one. Got it. <laughs> That's the, that is the most exciting. <laughs> it's harder for us to ask questions on this. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, one of the first things I would like to say before I get into it is uh, um, 
Uh, I'd like to obviously thank uh, Chris and his staff and Mary and Treasurer and everybody else. Um, the school, uh, everybody is extremely cooperative down here and assist us uh, in getting the audit done. Uh, we're a disruption to the day-to-day -day operations. Um, I like to think of as at least a necessary evil. Um, uh, but uh, they do make time out of their day to get us the information that we request. We try to get plenty of leave time. Uh, but it's a pleasure working with all the, uh, the, the staff in town hall, school police, by everybody, like I said. Uh, is, uh, uh, gives us the information that we request. Uh, and, and on a pretty timely basis. So uh, I do want to thank That's everybody great. for that. Can I hold you for just one second? Yeah. Um, just what does the board think if we should bring Mary and Paula up now, or should we? Because I don't want, I, I think there might be some responsive, um, you know, we may have questions that they're going to address too. I, um, Is that all right? No, would, uh, I, would, I, I would actually respectfully request that you um, Mr. To go through it? All right, I'm just saying if we're going through questions. Okay, we'll, okay. we'll leave it this way, that's fine. Okay, uh, the first report is a report on federal awards. Um, there's a compliance rule out there that the federal government puts out that if you spend over $500,000 of their funds in any one particular fiscal year, the specific compliance auditing that's required is called part of the Single Audit Act. Uh, in fiscal year 2014, <coughs> Uh, the town spent 542000 just over the threshold, uh, and, and actually in future years that threshold is going up, uh, so you may or may not have this report every year. And what we're required to do is to, in effect, uh, do a compliance audit for any grant in itself uh, of over $300,000 in expenditures ought to get to at least, right now, a 50% coverage threshold. So we have to go through and select various programs that you go through and, and, and audit those. What you'll find is that most of the expenditures, uh, and, and most communities uh, like yourself, um, uh, the expenditures are usually school related, school lunch, special education, Title I, et cetera. Um, uh, what I'm pleased to say is that we have what's called an unmodified report, no qualifications, we didn't have any findings, no significant deficiencies or material weaknesses in the financial controls, uh, no compliance uh, issues relative to the operations of the grant that's not just financial, there's also all kinds of other programmatic issues that were required to test. Uh, everything came out great, and so this is a nice clean report, uh, and, and, and they had a finding from the previous <coughs> year that was resolved, which was a minor finding, no financial impact. Uh, so the minor, the minor issue that was around for the previous year had, had been corrected for this year's audit, so I think we're good there. Uh, obviously, if there are any questions, we'll certainly be able to address those now. Just a curious, um, what was the minor finding? There's a, re there's a requirement, a, a kind of a new requirement, that if, you, if a person works on uh, a particular federal grant, they're not required to make timesheets out to prove that they were, but they have to do semi-annual certifications that says, you know, under the penalties of perjury, I had worked on, say, special education okay. for this period. And so getting that information in place for all the, uh, or even if there's part-time, so there's different rules relative to a certification. They eased up the restrictions. It used to be a lot more onerous, uh, but they realized that if you take a look at, realistically, a lot of the teachers that work under those particular grants, it's a continuing type of thing. Okay. And so it, it made sense that they actually change some of the True, requirements. The compliance issue. Yeah, and, and again, it's making sure that you have the documentation in place over at the, at the school to verify if the feds do come in, or if the auditors take a look at it on their behalf, that uh, those required documents are there. So. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the sentence here, it says, however material witnesses may exist that have not been identified, uh, does that mean there are some that are very in-depth but what it means is that an audit itself does not look at every transaction mm -hmm. as we go through. Uh, we study and evaluate the system of internal control so, uh, surrounding the financial uh, operations of, in effect, the town and its total, the school, and then the specific grants, depending on what that is. Uh, but we cannot give absolute assurance that everything that would be, what we could see would be significant, mm -hmm. was actually found. Mm -hmm. What we think we've done, and I believe we've done, is we um, do a substantial audit on that, but we do testing. We may not have picked up, yeah. as part of our testing, well, a transaction or whatever. So it's kind of a 
qualification, but we give an opinion and, and we give uh, that. We didn't find anything. It's kind of a negative opinion. We weren't hired to do a complete study and evaluation of mm -hmm. internal controls taken mm -hmm. as a whole to make sure of that. That's another engagement. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, it's not a bad thing, but we just can't give that absolute assurance. So the standard language in the report lets the reader know that there may be something that we didn't test mm -hmm. that could have led to. Should we have done it more detail, or, or is no. this enough? No, I mean, I, it's. Based on our audit judgment, we do a lot of these. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you do. And we can usually tell because uh, one of the benefits of having um, the, the budget, even from your, your town side, mm -hmm. you know how many employees are in a particular department. And if you really start breaking down what are the actual components of everything that goes in, you'll find that most departments don't have a lot of discretionary expenditures. Mm -hmm. I mean, Chris yeah. will probably take <laughs> when you get down to it. Right. So when you sit no. back and say they have good, you know, and, and the school's the same way. There's, mm -hmm. there's classrooms, there's things. And yeah, so if you're taking a look at a grant, as mm -hmm. part of that grant application, mm -hmm. there needs to be a, 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 an identification of how many uh, teachers uh, mm -hmm. that are needed for that particular program mm -hmm. with their approximate salary. So we can match that up as part of what we do. And so we'll find out, we'll test 90 something percent of the expenditures by going through payroll and some other larger expenditures in that particular grant. Mm -hmm. So the likelihood that there's a material weakness in those particular grants, I'd say was remote. Mm -hmm. Just because of the fact of the way your operations have, there's not a lot of discretion in a lot of these particular programs. Um, so I don't think you need to do any more than you oh, would. Good. I'd have to raise my price. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and again, I don't think you get any benefit off it. Yeah, if I, I as I go through this, if I see something, if we see something that doesn't look right, we will extend our audit procedures mm -hmm. to dig deeper. Yeah. <clears throat> but if all the testing's coming up okay, and we take a look at the over budget and the application and, 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 and the, the posting of the ledgers and knowing that the cash is being reconciled on a timely basis and the ledgers being updated, we've got a sense of realistically where you are. And so that's kind of how we do that. Thank you very much. Okay. Is there any other question? I'm okay. sorry. Yeah, uh, we have one question just okay. from the, um, Peter, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, Peter Pesci, Peter Pesci, Peter Pesci Peter 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 Peter. Um, are the cash accounts all reconciled currently up to uh, the end of the year? Up to June 30th? Uh, up to now. Yeah. We don't this, know. This stops at June 30th. We, 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 we oh, were they, were they current as of June 30th? Yes. Okay. Peter, can, can we can you hold those that line of questioning till we get to the management letter? Well, I was just talking about cash balances. I thought. All right. I know what no. we were just Slip federal in. grants, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So. I just want to try to keep us focused and right. people at home being so. able to let them follow. Uh, I'd actually like to, if any more questions on the schedule of federal awards. Any questions? No. no. Thank you. Okay. So thank you. Uh, like next to talk about the comprehensive annual financial report. Now this is, you know, a hundred and ten page document, and I'm sure you want me to go page by page. <laughs> Please. Please. No, thank you. <laughs> no, what about line by line? <laughs> we skip the pictures. So let's skip the pictures. Those are the, those the part I like. <laughs> yeah. Well, what the town decided to do a couple of years ago is is, is to ex. Uh, extend the actual audit uh, report, you know, the, the actual financial statements to include a comprehensive annual financial report. Uh, I believe, I mean, it's not required. You could do just the basic financial statement. Uh, but the comprehensive annual financial report, I think, makes this document, for those that want to read it, uh, a lot more user-friendly. Because if you just take a look at the financial statements themselves, they don't look like the normal, if, if you're in a commercial area, they don't look like a normal business financial statement. There's fund base, there's three different bases of accounting in here. There's a budgetary base that is set up by the Commonwealth of Mass Department of Revenue, and how Mary has to keep her books, and how purchasing has to do that, how the treasurer has to do their things. And so there's a report on budgetary basis. And then there's a report on what's fund based, a modified accrual basis of accounting, and then there's a full accrual statement. Unless you do that all the time, it's very difficult, even for experienced CPAs sometimes, to read that. But what the Comprehensive finance, Annual Financial Report does, it gives Chris the opportunity as he goes through to write a transmittal letter 
to, to, in plain English, introduce what the town's all about. That's not audited, but it's easily readable. It's like, hey, what are we doing? Where are we going? What are our goals? Uh, where are we going forward? We had a section in there uh, talking about OPEB, what's going through, some of the uh, initiatives that are being made. So it's like, oh, I can see what we're doing here, similar to a budget document. And then there's a section called Management Discussion and Analysis. And inside of Management Discussion and Analysis, uh, it's really done by Mary and her people, and Chris overlooking it, to go through. And what's in there is what's called Currently Known Facts. That's the accountant's version of what happened, why things went up and down. Do you have, uh, what's your statement of net positions? Are you positive and negative? Are there any problems? And so it goes through a series, series of required disclosure and management discussion and analysis that gives uh, the reader a good sense in playing English what the numbers mean behind it. Again, not in depth is an overview. Uh, then you have the financial statements, the audit opinion. Actually, the only thing we own in this whole 110 pages is the audit opinion. <laughs> and basically, what we're telling the reader is that uh, we're independent auditors, and everything in this document is yours. We assist putting this together because we do that all the time. But 100% of the amounts in there uh, are coming off of Mary's ledges and going through the process of saying, where were the budgets? We're, and we audit all of those transactions. We audit the adjustments that are made in order to convert from one basis of accounting to another. We need to be able to tell the reader, if we agree with it, is that we have an unmodified opinion. So when the financial statements go out to rating agencies and other stakeholders in there, they can know that the numbers that you're looking at as a true representation of your results of operation, your statement of net position, and, and, and where you are with fund balance at the end of the year. What you want, obviously, is an unmodified opinion, and that's the opinion you've been receiving for the last several years, which is the best. Again, it doesn't say it's perfect, okay? Uh, what it says is that we believe, based on our testing, our extensive testing throughout that, that it's an accurate representation of your financial position and results of operation. And that gives the reader a comfort level uh, that they can rely on you when you sit back and do a bond rating. If you're going up for bonds, there's a cost associated with uh, having a modified opinion or not having good numbers. And then in the back of the report, <coughs> after the notes, etc., a lot of disclosures, uh, there's a statistical section. Inside the statistical section, there's a lot of demographic information, but there's also a lot of 10-year history. Mm -hmm. And so somebody can take a look and say, what's the financial position not as of just June 30th, 2014, but what's, what has been your general fund fund balance for the last 10 years? That can give an indication as to your long-term stability and whether or not you're managing your finance as well, whether you've used stabilization funds, and if you have, have those been uh, replenished? And so there's a lot of good information that is not as confusing as what you'd see, obviously, as, as part of the financial statements. So, so that's, the, that's how this report is formatted. Um, and key things that are in here, obviously, uh, the key things that we take a look at is obviously your, your general funds, fund balance on a budgetary basis. That's how you budget. That's where your tax rate set. That's the budgetary basis of accounting. Uh, and uh, what you'll find is that you'll, you have about $2 million or so of fund balance at the end of fiscal year 2014 in the general fund. Now that's not free cash. Free cash is calculated on a different basis, <laughs> but that's the remaining total fund balance. Mary can tell you what the end of the, the ending free cash was on top of that, and that's on a, you know when you take a look at it, almost forty million dollars worth of expenditures. Uh, not a huge number, uh, not as bad as some, but probably you could get a little bit better. To offset that, you've got a couple of stabilization funds. You've got two million dollars in a general stabilization fund and you've got uh, another million two in a capital stabilization <laughs> fund. That, in effect, um, gives you some wiggle room to be some financially flexible if something occurs as the time goes forward. Those long-term policies, procedures, as uh, and Chris and the people are working on, it's it important to sit back and say, all right, this is how we're going to manage our budget, not just year to year, but on an ongoing basis. And that's what the CAFA takes a look at. Other things that are important in these financial statements is taking a look at, and, and unfortunately, for the, like the water and sewer enterprise funds, these are full accrual statements, close to what you find with a business type operation. 
However, those statements can be somewhat misleading because that's not how you budget. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. still have to go through and say, oh, look at all, well, you might have a lot of capital assets, you still have some debt associated with that, and, and you may have some uh, um, positive amounts. <laughs> What you really want to take a look at is realistically Mary's ledges mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on the operating on that, and you won't really find that this much in here unless you're really familiar with how to analyze the cash flow mm -hmm. uh, statement. Mm -hmm. Because you want to generate cash through operations, cash that you come in, and that's almost a budgetary basis, mm -hmm. less the actual cash expenditures out the door. Then you have to go down and say, right, what do we pay off in our principal amounts of the notes and the water fund? <coughs> I think in fiscal year 2015, you have about $3 million worth of principal and interest to be paid there. So it's a substantial amount. Um, cash is running low on that fund. Uh, I don't believe we have any uh, retained earnings that were certified by the state at the end of the year. So that's something obviously everybody's aware of and needs to watch out for. So that's kind of a, a watch issue from our standpoint. <coughs> Uh, sewer fund's a little bit better shape, um, recovering that, but again, you re really, it, and a water and sewer kind of, you know, a lot of it goes hand in hand, uh, even though they're different, uh, <laughs> but how you build and what you go through. Uh, and so rating agencies will look at that to want to make sure that they're self-supporting, and if they're not self-supporting, what type of subsidy has to come in from the general fund, and what's the rate structure, do you have a permanent deficit or not? Uh, and so those are those from a financial standpoint are probably the biggest concerns, not as much with the general fund, but obviously with the water fund and, and then the sewer fund. From a long-term perspective, the biggest thing that the outside looking in gets concerned of are uh, long-term liabilities. What's the level of the outstanding debt? <coughs> and what are the unrecognized, unfunded liabilities that are out there? Which the Governmental Accounting Standards Board, who sets the rules for governmental reporting and the in, 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 the, in the nation establishes those standards. Mm -hmm. New standards are coming up for fiscal year 15 for your retirement system. Mm -hmm. So your allocated share of the you know, regional retirement system, yeah. over $500 million of unfunded liability, a little over 3%. So you've got probably $15, $20 million worth of a liability that you're going to be paying off as they go through the process of, and, and the law requires that the retirement systems uh, fully fund their systems by 2040 at the latest. Mm -hmm. uh, and so your share of the assessment will be reducing that. Prior to fiscal year 15, that liability has only been a disclosure. Mm -hmm. So you can see that in the required supplementary information in the notes to the financial statements that sat back and somebody can do the math saying you're 3.25% or $500 million, you do the math and that becomes your Share. In fiscal year 15, that 20 or so million dollars is going to end up, not in your fund base, not in your budgetary base, but on those full accrual entity wide statements. Mm -hmm. And so your fund balance, in effect, your net position is going to go from 55 million dollars of a positive when you measure all your long term assets and liabilities, and that'll go down by 20 million dollars in fiscal year 15. You're not alone. Any, uh, in, in any of the systems that are out there, there's very few that are fully funded, but that's uh, something that's going to be a negative to you. Two years after that, the GASB is also doing the same thing with other post-employment benefits. Your particular share, and this one you probably have more ability, you have more ability to change that liability than <coughs> the pensions. Pensions, state law, you have to fund it. OPEB is the funding mechanism, is 100% up to the community that's because that's your liability. Mm -hmm. It's not really shared amongst employees like uh, employers like uh, really happens in the pension system that you get the 38 c payments back and forth. You can change the plan and as I said earlier if you took a look at the transmittal letter the OPEP liability the last time it was done it was in the 30 million dollar range 36 million dollars and at the end of uh, at 7 2012 there's a new valuation new study being done that can dramatically change what's there based on plan, based on percentage of uh, uh, contributions by the retiree, mm -hmm. uh, based on the wellness program and all the things that, the, 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 that, that you're looking at in order to reduce that long-term liability. A couple of years from now, that $36 million um, will be 
put on your books. Mm -hmm. You already have nine million of the thirty-six, so it ends up really being just twenty-seven. Yeah. Just say twenty-seven. Right? <laughs> but it, it's now bringing that to everybody's attention. It's going to hit you square in the face, whereas before you really had to understand these financial statements to see the impact of these unfunded long-term liabilities and have the ability to address that. The town has put a, a, small, aside, a small amount aside in the OPEB trust fund, uh, but nothing that substantial right now. But obviously, as, as you move forward, the more assets you set aside in an irrevocable trust, mm -hmm. actually, the, the lower your liability becomes because now you can change what's called the discount rate because you're going to be earning investment income at a long-term rate of return as opposed to a short-term rate of return, and that has a dramatic effect. That's why the retirement system only has $20 million and the OPEP has 36, mm -hmm. because they've already accumulated, you know, 50%. They've got a $500 million liability, but they have $500 million worth of, of assets. Mm -hmm. So those are the biggest things from a highlight standpoint that I think are in the CAPA, and I'd certainly be happy to address any of those issues or any other questions you had relative to that. I, it, I really enjoyed reading this. It took me several hours because I agree with you. It's, it's something we can use in the future for all the, the data in the back. And I, thought, I thought it was very well done. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anybody else there good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Next. All right. The last report is the management letter. Now, one of the things about a management letter. Um, it's a critical document. It doesn't tell you anything you've done well. So it's <laughs> unfortunate. <that's what. laughs> um, however, one of the ways you can gauge how well you've done is how many points had been in there. If you remember a couple of years ago, how thick it was, material weaknesses, significant deficiencies, uh, all over the place, and, and all kinds of beginning balance adjustments, and all kinds of things that were really um, critical in getting changed. And, and what I found that uh, management has done over the last couple of years, especially in the last year, uh, even the last several months, is they've prioritized <laughs> what was important. So what you'll see is that you won't see any more material weaknesses and significant deficiencies. So you're not putting any significant assets of the town at risk. There could be some small stuff in there that we had <laughs> talked about earlier. Yeah, I know. Uh, the audit's not designed to take a look at every small thing in there. But I think, at least from the outside looking in, you've made significant progress. And those that we still have in here, if you take a look at um, last year's prior findings in the section mm -hmm. in here, um, there were like 14 prior findings. Mm -hmm. And what you'll find is six were fully completed, resolved by the end of the year. Another one was after year end, and a couple more are being done in this particular year. So at the end of fiscal year 15, I don't expect to see more than a few out there. And I understand the priorities, and we've discussed this with management, saying, I, I would do this, 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 and this first <coughs> and to address it. We go over these points with the management in detail up front to make sure that, number one, we're right in what we're saying, and that we can come to a, uh, a proposed solution that works for who you are. I can't come up with a comment that says, you know what, you need to segregate uh, these particular duties, but you're going to need three more people in the accounting department. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know Mary's not going to get the two people, okay? Sorry. And so you have to find solutions inside of your structure that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So just going to the book isn't always the best solution. Um, but what we did find is there's been significant progress, and I don't believe there's anything in here that isn't being taken, talking to Chris, especially that, you know, that isn't being taken seriously by management. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I thought was good this year, too, is that uh, and I always like it when it happens. The, the town's not afraid to send us somewhere. Our job is to audit the financial statements taken on the poll. There's a lot of big numbers in here. $55 million here, this $30 million liability here, this. And so the little stuff we like to take a look at because it's important just from making sure that all the controls are in place. But uh, I'm going to say something that might sound horrible. If there was Twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars missing from some department. It would not change my life opinion because it's not going to change the readers the way you are from a financial standpoint. Are you uh, in better shape because you have fifty-five million dollars worth of net positions 
of $55 million and $30,000. You're pretty much in the same place. And what we like to do is we like to cycle and go through and, and look at other things. And so we rely on management to send us out to some places that, you know what, would you mind finding some time to go out and look at a particular department because we want to just check this out. And we'll cycle those through as part of it. So we, we don't just look at all, we always look at the big departments. Mm -hmm. We'll always be in Treasury. We're always going to be over in Assessment. We're going to take a look at water and sewer and school, all those departments. But there are other departments that may not have a huge financial impact on where you are. But it's always good to go out and visit these particular places just to make sure that uh, the systems are in place. And, and management's not afraid to send us out there. And regardless of what we find, they want to deal with it. Yeah. And sometimes that will. And I, I do like that because we we want we, we love perfection. We know we can't get it. But sometimes when you find something in one department, it may be reflective of several. Yeah. That it might be an indication. And so what we're trying to do, and, and I think Chris and I have talked about it, is to make sure that anything that they believe, and these are the guys that hit day to day. So they know better than we do if there's any issues. You know, is it uh, the Treasury talking to Treasury? Is a department not making a turnover like they should be according to the policies on a timely basis? And if they're not, if they don't have the staff and resources for that, we'll put we'll put a person on that. And so I expect to doing now that the big stuff's gone, in the future I would like to be able to do the small things. Mm -hmm. Still do all the big things, but we're not finding the problem. So we can we've been able to reduce a lot of time in one area. But let's make that up with uh, taking a look at helping you know all the departments get better, more efficient, mm -hmm. things like that. And so you'll find a little bit of, of this in here. So that's kind of an overview of the uh, of the management level. Uh, again, there are 17, well, the 17 different pages in here, and they're all points. Uh, 17. But I don't. You don't want me to talk about things that we consider resolved, because everybody's ready to certainly address it. A lot of these are resolved. Right. This is very this positive. Is, I think it's worth worthwhile for continuity of folks who are watching but not here. Okay. If you wouldn't mind simply touching on the item and the fact that it's resolved is a plus. Yeah. You know, it's, it's it is it's worthwhile while mm -hmm. looking at the uh, remaining and unresolved items to recognize mm -hmm. that you, you have made progress. On right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, that, that's a good idea because okay. then it shows that we've been doing things fiscally. Okay, so, all right. so in the prior year there were 14 different points. Six have been fully resolved by the end of the year and I'll go over those first and then I'll, I'll just touch on each one of those and expand on the ones that are still open okay. as we go forward. Uh, the first point was uh, to adopt a formal cash and investment policy which was developed in fiscal year 14 and accepted and, and, and approved. What's important about that is that uh, treasurers can change. There's all kinds of different risk tolerances that people have, whether in the investment world, et cetera. Now, the treasurer is limited to what can be done because of a lot of structural oversight by Mass General Law, what can and can't be uh, uh, invested in because the preservation of capital, especially for the general fund, water, sewer, operating funds, you don't want to lose the investment. It's not a long-term perspective, it's short-term. Having a policy in place that gives you a benchmark that we can audit to, and it's a GASBRI requirement, not a state law requirement, if you feel for that, uh, is, is an excellent thing to have because that will outlast, hopefully not the treasurer, but it goes through. <laughs> and, and, and as you go through, uh, it's hard to make changes to a, a policy that's sound. And so I think that was a good thing that you did in, in this year 14. Uh, structural roles and responsibilities. Um, there are, um, we had talked about segregation of duties, setting up who should do what, when they should do it, what are the roles and responsibilities for a lot of the um, uh, finance people. What we found in this particular year is that um, uh, there was a lot of, there was a new deputy collector that was hired, there's additional resources that are now in place, and we feel with that additional resources, all those other things and get the structural roles and responsibility was able to be um, delegated in a manner that gave you a, a better and efficient uh, operation that could minimize the chances that you could have a material weakness of internal control of significant deficiencies. Uh, the next point, actually it's a law but it's also a good business practice, health insurance, membership, internal audit. 
Uh, every two years, the state requires you to do an audit of everybody to make sure that who you're carrying on your plans are actually still employed here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? uh, and other things that, you know, you know, as as the kids get older, they turn 27. Now they're off the plan. Are mm -hmm. they still on or off? All those type of things have. Uh, it could be an expense related to how you do that. And so um, there was a... Um, a biennial uh, audit that was done uh, it, and the adjustments were made. We took a look at also the systems for ads and deletes and think it's in pretty good shape. So once you clean it up, it's not as significant because if it, uh, you have to go through, jump through hoops and uh, usually to become a new employee uh, yeah, there. You have to be part of the retirement system. So as long as the people maintain the accuracy is adding people as they come on board, and there's always a detective control because if I'm a new employee and I'm supposed to have health insurance and I don't get it, I'm talking to someone. Yes. However, when I leave, if I still have it, I may not be as vocal. And so All that's that money for cancer, not a dime for lockjaw. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, do we, um, would we typically uh, produce such an audit for other contracted expenditures? What comes to mind is insurances, telephone lines, um, you, you know, can, payroll. Yeah. We do, on payroll, we do a lot of extent. That's one of the areas that we always check because of the significance of that. We consider that a high risk area. And so, and I think taking, and it's going back to the budget we talked about. What we don't probably check is, you know, if you sit back and say, does, does the employee show up? Well, if it's not marked on the sheet, we wouldn't know, you know. However, we, I think it's probably hard to get a fictitious employee on the rolls. Um, so we do do a lot of testing relative to that. But we don't, there's a separate audit if you want to audit your telephone bills, or utility bills, and elect, you know, those type of bills, there's certainly opportunity to take a look. There's some, there's some firms out that specialize in, in those type of things that they get paid based on what they find. And that's something okay. that certainly. And some some of that has happened. On the phone side, and I've been trying to move us to electronic reports, which we've been able to do on one part of our bill but not another. So we still get these big monstrous pages, which are very hard to read through. But uh, we're, we're moving in the direction of being able to. Have, the more manipulatable and, and, and reviewable data is, the easier it is to, to audit. So uh, we we have to. I know that Jen has done some of that work already on the phone. Side. Okay. So you actually are monitoring the calls then. Well, yeah, we checked the, you know, something's uh, anomalous uh, when I go through the bills too, I'll say, what's going on here? And so it's funny, I actually, <laughs> I actually caught nice. one account and I'm like, well, that's an odd call. What's going here? It was a call to me <laughs> when I was being interviewed. <laughs> so I'm like, hey, <laughs> <laughs> so, right, I laugh when I found it. <laughs> uh, so, it, so this health, this health insurance is required by law every two years. Right. We did it last fiscal year, so mm -hmm. is it something we would have to budget for for next year? No, it just happens. No, no, no it just happens. No cost. Yeah. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got it. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, some of it's as simple as just taking the last payroll register, <coughs> going down and making sure that everybody's still in there. Yeah, and when you hand out paychecks, the person is there to accept the paycheck. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And they haven't come around with a mask and a, and yeah. a mask. Yeah. But to his point, if there's adult children, you know, that are that have cycled off, you know, well, we, we, or people the, have to certify. Yeah. 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 Or whatever. Everyone is given a, a form. You have to you're, you're, you're certifying that these people are legit, and you have to kind of copies of birth. Copies of birth. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Okay. For some people, found it very onerous because mm -hmm. it was one of the first things it I walked into in January. Yeah. Was, mm -hmm. We're doing this, and some people are upset. And we had about six, seven people who had not complied. Mm -hmm. So we said, okay, comply, or you're off the health insurance. <laughs> and they complied. Yeah. So, comply. yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, and the specific rules if you're divorced, and looking yeah. at when you cover a spouse, what's in the agreement. Mm -hmm. And that's in the law. So it, it's, a, it's a good thing to make sure. Check it out every Great, thank you. Uh, the centralization of 30B procurement compliance. Um, this is one of those ones that, uh, oh, I missed one, I'm sorry. Yeah, oh, recreation. Okay. You you jumped, jumped page. Page. I jumped the whole page? Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Library sorry. Tr library trust funds. Right. All right. So, um, non-spendable library trust funds. Uh, basically, there's a, uh, a non-spendable and a spendable portion. 
corpus of trust, somebody gave a trust, might have $50,000 in there, you can spend the interest or you could spend the principal. Uh, there needed to be an analysis of what the proper balances were the, in there. That was conducted in 14, came up with what the historical is, and so the financial statements are properly reported in the town uh, with the best evidence. Is it perfect? No, but it looks pretty good uh, as we went through. So that's that's been resolved. Mm -hmm. Is it, uh, along with the resolution, is there an, an ongoing structure now so that uh, yeah. we're, yeah. we're compliant? From you're compliant with that, that you put the principal amount into a separate account. It doesn't need to necessarily be a separate account. Uh, in the investment side, you're segregating. You're segregating on the ledger to sit back and say, "All right, this trust has a fifty thousand dollar corpus." Mm -hmm. Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the rest becomes expendable. Mm -hmm. And what usually occurs is that you only spend realized gains in any of these trust funds, those type of things, and any unrealized gains, although recorded, uh, wouldn't be considered spendable until until we actually make it into cash. So you don't have to liquidate obviously investments. Um, enhanced controls over pre-numbered receipts in the, in the public works. Um, you know, most of the departments, they get money in for little things, etc. It's always a good control to have log books, pre-numbered mm -hmm. receipts, uh, yeah. so you can match up what came in to the department to what gets turned over to the treasurer and recorded on the books. Um, we found that they changed some of the procedures based on our previous year's requirements. And again, it doesn't have to be complicated to put in a system. That's makes sense for that department from the Treasury side uh, to safeguard the assets uh, and make sure that they get in the right place. Uh, enhanced controls over counter collections recreation department. Uh, similar type uh, process going through, taking a look at those. Uh, again, this, these type of things aren't material to the financial statements but we're visiting these particular departments to see whether or not we can enhance their controls. Um, and again, they made some changes relative to that. Um, again, not extensive. There was really not really a big problem. It's just the possibility that um, an error could occur and not be detected. And so, again, they, um, um, they're reconciling to the general ledger between the erects. And so I think we have made sufficient uh, steps in order to eliminate that. Just, just point of clarification, these are items up to this point that you believe are resolved. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Centralization of the uh, Chapter 30 procurement compliance documentation. Um, we test procurement as part of our regular audit. Um, if everything's centralized, again, if you have a chief procurement office and you go through a process, the state has specific rules and regulations with procurement. Even it also is covered under later when we talk about disposal of uh, town yeah. school yeah. assets. Mm -hmm. It's all covered under, and, and the inspector general's office is the one that's in effect the oversight body, puts out a good uh, manual and document on how to be in compliance. They they teach, they certify. There's all kinds of things that, that we take a look at. What we found is that um, uh, as, as part of our testing. Um, even though we may have found the documentation that wasn't in a centralized uh, location, it wasn't being coordinated in effect with the town manager's office to make sure that everything's in compliance. What we found the subsequent year end, I think you've been making changes relative to that. So at June 30th, the, the issue was still there. After year end, we believe the changes that were made is sufficient. One of the things we haven't done, we haven't audited after year end. So. Those are the type of things that that will still be in next year's report and the management response relative to that, if everything checks out, would be a resolved um, finding. Mm -hmm. So I think that uh, the changes made also does that. Um, ambulance receivables and write-off old related user charges. You never collect everything that you build on the end of the ambulance fee because there's, there's a high write-off percentage, yeah. and, and again, you're not alone. Um, however, this is a, an outside agency doing a lot of the billing for you. We found a lot of the receivables went back a long time, and realistically, by looking at the ledger, saying, oh, we've got X amount of receivables still left in, we're going to be collecting that, and we can plan on that. Yeah. Realistically, you want to put in a realistic amount, go through a process, identify a, a process of what you want to do in order to write off a receivable that's uncollectible. The person passed away 
you know, the estate was through probate and everything else, you're never going to get it. Right. Not, and so in fiscal year 14, um, so what we're saying is to take a look at the write-off. You should also record the information on the ledgers, and it should be reconciled between the outside party and internally to make sure that they're pre presenting accurately mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. only all the activity, the collections and what came in, but the outstanding balances so you can apply those particular policies and procedures. I'm going to interrupt for just a second and ask a question of Chris. Have our receivables been rising on an annual basis? Um, I think a little bit based on rates. Yeah. yeah. I would think um, so. yeah. I'm right. And we've also been doing more carries. I mean, there's been yeah. more service calls. Transports. Yeah, there's been more, tra I, more transports. Um, we are working to, we're in, the, we're in the early stages of moving towards a new provider. Yeah, we, we, we can talk about that afterwards I, because I don't want to delay Mr. Power's presentation. I just was asking for a historical view. So. And so, uh, so in order to get a little bit better at this, the, the town's going through a process to identify and go through a new service provider, mm -hmm. um, which in effect, it, it seems like the controls are a lot better there. However, there's, there's one little drawback is the final reconciliation to the ledges. I think there has to be some software adjustments or tweaks in order for that to occur. Again, that's after year end. We haven't audited that, but obviously management response has said that we're not completely there that yet, and we need to do additional work in order to get there. Uh, something that we'll evaluate and they could go through that. So that's not completely resolved, but obviously action's been taken in order to uh, resolve that particular issue. Is, is this the only area um, in the budget where there is a write-off it just uh, um, wash it away. I think it's probably the primary one, but I think yeah. there's some other. I mean, well, I don't want. It's, 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 it's kind a, of like well, yeah, yeah. Right. abatements, but those go through a formal procedure. Mm -hmm. you know. Right, and this is what we should be establishing is the mm -hmm. you know, procedure kind of either to allow Chris and the fire chief to decide, you know, when to. That's that was my well, next question: is where would a, such a write-off policy? We found actually one that's. It hasn't updated since in 24 years, and things have changed, so we need to <laughs> update it. Does it have anything like hounding you with dogs in it? <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> we're working on that part. Yeah. Yeah. We said the town's there's tree no, working yeah. there. There's no, there's no mean capacity. Right. right so That's kind of what I meant. So well, I mean, not to put too big a point on this, but a lot of the uncollectibles are... They're uncollectible. Right. They're collectible. They're uncollectible. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. So uh, you know. without dealing with probate, and then you're talking. Yeah, about but there, there's, there's, right. there comes a point where there's no there's no sense in even carrying an age receivable. Exactly. exactly. Now, having said that, there's also no sense in even recognizing an age receivable if we make no fair efforts, no general efforts to collect it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Some, I think I think we've been far better in current in, in, in recent times, but some of these do go back a ways, and yeah. you know, it's it's, it's it just as be cleaned. Yeah. So. I think it's the legacy accounts that have been carried over and oh, yeah. kept on top of the debt. Sure. I hate to tell you this, but there was a big discussion in 20 years ago, and we had a committee working on this to get this done. And <laughs> Here interesting we are. that we still Here you are, are still yeah. are doing it. And uh, is it the type of billing, billing uh, to Medicare or to individual yeah. Uh, yeah. insurance, and, and, you, you, right. that? Uh, provide, provide a right, but then, then obviously, what isn't go back? Yeah, go I'm back and is the you know, uh, is the individual alive. still alive? Have they done it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and what are the likelihood? And again, there's always a cost benefit. Is the transport successful? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sorry. That's a capital. That's part of Chris's stat. I almost said something. Too. No, don't Management. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's talented. move on. <laughs> so. Um, uh, so, audit of student activity funds. Actually, this year, the DESE, uh, Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, used to be called the, mm -hmm. the Department of Education, finally went through and established a comprehensive guide and manual for audits. This has been a requirement for years that you're supposed to have every year an audit of the student activity funds. If you're not mm -hmm. sure what the student activity funds, uh, it's Money that actually the students own, and the, and the superintendent mm -hmm. and the school committee votes to approve, and we can run those particular pro uh, programs. So you might have like a model UN program, a DECA, or things like that, that uh, the parents and the, and the kids would raise funds for. They want to go on a trip, field trip, etc. So it's not coming out of the school budget, but you usually need a, 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 a teacher advisor. 
as part of that. And so it's co-curricular, we'll go through, it's a great thing to have, uh, but there needs to be controls on how that money is spent because the way the law is set up, you're allowed to have money in a checking account out of the principal's account. Who can spend the money before going through the normal um, uh, review process that pretty much all other expenditures go through. So there's specific rules and regulations on how those monies can be spent and what type of monies can be spent. And so part of allowing this to occur with the legislation was required a, s a specific audit. We don't, that's not part of what we've been hired to do. However, annually there's a required audit. There's new regulations that were just established. I, yeah, I believe I sent it over to Mary, if not, I'll get it to her and, and, and the school. Mm -hmm. I have the, the website that you can go to to go through this particular process. But the audit has to be done in compliance with that new guideline. It doesn't require that an outside auditor to do that. What the guidelines say is that it's somebody that should be independent of the operation. So if it's a principal account, the principal shouldn't be doing the audit. <laughs> Right. If the school business manager isn't in direct involvement with that, the school business director manager can do that in conjunction with Mary. However, as the auditor, in order for this to go away, we're going to have to take a look at those work papers to make right. sure they're in compliance. Mm -hmm. So if you do it internally, that's okay, and we would take a look at that to make sure that that's... And the, the thing is, once you do it the first year, what you'll find is that 60% of it is the same every year. Mm -hmm. It's just a roll forward type audit, and the rest is just testing the transactions to make sure all the everything's approved. Uh, this hasn't been done. We're finding finally a lot of other communities doing the same thing now, because the DSA finally put out not the, uh, the had their own priorities relative to what they needed to do, but now they have a, a, a specific guideline out there, uh, and that's still open. Uh, but I believe you've already had discussions with yep. the schools about. We've already had discussions, and we're setting up a time to start doing it. So start literally doing the audit. Yes. Okay. Fraud risk assessment. Now, this may sound worse than it is. <laughs> okay. But this is a standard business practice that you should always be assessing risk, no matter what you do. You know, insure, do, do I insure? Do I not insure? How, value, how, how expensive is the inventory that we may be taking a look at? What do we have to do? Uh, are there adequate controls, cash controls at the departmental level? What are the purchasing? Are, 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 are departments allowed to just purchase without any oversight? So there's all kinds of different things. How well do you keep track of your sick and vacation time? Because obviously there's money associated with that. It's not cash, but it'll be cash out the door if somebody's out sick and it's not recorded. The best people to assess the risk are the people that do it every day. So if you go down, usually we take a look first at the department head level and their key people to say, all right, what's that risk? Evaluate that risk. And so there's a formal process that you go through and say, all right, these are the things that I guess we could be at risk, and it's not just cash purchasing. So you go through a little checklist. Then it comes up and it comes over really eventually to Crystal. Sit back and say, all right, let's evaluate all the different departments and the risks that are associated. Let's prioritize these. Some of the bigger things may not require a lot of changes in your system. But what this will do is we'll identify problems and holes, open doors that you'd want to close because it places maybe not those significant assets at risk, but some assets at, ri at risk, and how you change your process. Again, this is one of those that the initial pot <coughs> is hard, is difficult. It's a lot of work. But after that is done, then it's just going, okay, let's revisit this every year to make sure that your systems haven't changed, that we can do some testing. This is where Chris come over to us. And again, we use that as a tool, as part of our audit. So if I can say our clients evaluated risk and they've already identified these risk areas, I better add these to my audit program. So one of the things that you can do as part of that based on the assessment of risk is leverage the audit to do testing if that's so required. So um, you've, already, you've already done some risk association with cash and a few other things, um, but it really needs to be a formal program. This does not happen overnight. This isn't something that Chris is going to sit back and say, all right, it's January 12th, 13th, whatever it is today, and um, we'll have this done by the, you know, 
before the Super Bowl's over. Right. That's not going to happen. <laughs> it's 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 months of progress, and what I'll, what I find a lot of communities to do is to roll out a couple of departments to go through that, get the uh, the the program and the questionnaires and the rest of that. We can assist you if you want to. to give you some samples that, that have gone through with programs that are out there, and then say, all right, this worked here, now we're going to roll this out to what we consider the risky departments, and probably over six months' time you'll be able to get this thing done. So I'm just trying to give you a realistic expectation mm -hmm. of what we expect to be done, but you know, by the time we're in after next year, uh, we would expect that uh, a good portion of this should be completed. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're actually looking at it as operational risks, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because there are elements of structural risk that have be, have begun to be addressed. Right. Um, a good example of that is putting together a uh, human resources structure. Right. Right. Um, from an operational standpoint, you're suggesting that your experiences are that you can actually draw from your own staff to develop some of that? Yeah, we could obviously assist with that, but inside of here, you can, you can draw from the old staff. We can help you out to draw that. There are other firms out there. There's uh, one guy that's worked in here before that's uh, done a few of these, and we respect him a lot. He does some great work. So if you find yourself, and, and depending on what you want us to do as your auditor, sometimes we can't Don't cross that right. line. Right. Yeah. And so we yeah. sit back and say, I can give you examples of what we, we do, but, and we do a risk assessment every year. But we don't do it in the, the, in the depth that we've done. Here. Well, from an, from, from an operational standpoint, it would just seem to be a good practice. Right. Mm -hmm. And again, once it's done, then the continued evaluation and the assessment <coughs> is usually only a couple of days a year as opposed to a lot of time. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so this is, and it's, you know, no matter how you look at it, and I'll tell you that Mary will tell me there's never a good time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. You know, during your slow time, you got to yeah, do right. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> waiting for that. And again, I, I understand that with them. Uh, and so sometimes the best way to do it, if you had the money to sit back and hire maybe an outside, but well, we can give you some samples and things like that. That uh, mm -hmm. you know, that'll be a word and a few other things that can, can ease a lot of that burden. Of, of pretty good assessments that have been done for other clients. We, we've made this the number one priority to finish this spring or to start to move major priorities on. So, uh, so we've talked about starting this up and setting it up. And I think we've got to do it piecemeal or piece by piece. We just can't, mm -hmm. we can't just mm -hmm. take Mary or mm -hmm. Paul or someone else off their job for mm -hmm. two months and yeah. have them do this. Um, I had the luxury of an internal auditor who did a lot of this for me in the past, but I just don't have an internal but, auditor. See, but that's where you can kind of leverage us a little bit if yeah. you've got that place in there and say, all right, as part of your testing during the spring, I got these three places that I think we're ready to go. Could you throw your guys out there to spend a half a day or a day doing some testing? And that's part of the audit fee. Obviously, we all know the difference between that and a project. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, right. can you do all of our departments and say, yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, it's, it's our job project. to get you to cover it under the fee while right. you do the project. While right. I do the project. Right. And, and, so, and that's okay, you know. Um, because you know what? That makes my job easier in, 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 in every year going mm -hmm. forward. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's, 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 it's not a short-term benefit. There's a short-term benefit. There's also a long-term that we can um, both sit back and say, hey, we're, we're doing pretty good here. And I'm, I'm happy to see this, but I'm, I'm probably uh, more pleased to hear that it's become a top priority yeah. on your desk. Yeah. As you plan, Steve, but that, you know, we actually have begun to address these both operationally and structurally, not in the comprehensive, comprehensive way, but it's been okay, oh, wait a second, let's fix this now. Mm. Let's fix this. So, yeah. but you've identified. Uh, yeah, yeah. And again, one of the things we'll get to in a few minutes is something like that that we did say. Hey, could you look at this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a problem. Let's fix it. Let's get it done. Yeah. We did. Now, when you set up, uh, do uh, the end up for uh, one department and and spend all a long time, that mo could be a model for every single other yeah. department. It's similar to the, yeah. the, 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 we just talked about the student activity audit. That can be done internally. Yeah, it's the that. same program yeah. that we're going to use, the, the town mm -hmm. and the school is going to use to do it. The audit program has already been designed by the mm -hmm. DESE, which is the requirement. So if you have a program, mm -hmm. usually they're pretty much the same. There's obviously some differences because operationally, yeah. you know, 
the police is a lot different than the public works mm -hmm. or the library, etc. But the police and fire may have a lot more but crossover than the risk. The risk management is the one I'm yeah. concerned about. Um, Chris, I'm I'm very intrigued by this whole. You know, we talked earlier today about the internal audit, and I know we we're not going to hire an internal person to do all this. But I think, from my perspective, looking at what happened with human resources when it was made a priority, and we we get we put re real resources behind it, it's actually being achieved because there is only so much time within a day for people to do jobs. And I would like to see us look at that model um, in, in order to be getting this achieved. Um, because it, it has been on our reports previously. And um, I, I think that we have to recognize the limitations within our existing staff. Peter Pescatore is frowning out there. I, mean, I want to hire somebody. <laughs> <laughs> um, but for a short, short term. I, I found, without going too far afield on this, um, the use I found for internal, everyone has this, oh, internal auditor, they're coming, they're coming to get you. No, it's not what it's about. It's about, <laughs> it's about making sure that you have processes in place, so when you have them, you're following them. And it's helping people stay away from problems. I mean, really, I, it's to ensure that people are, most people are trying to do the right thing. They're not always trying to do the right thing the right way, it's, but it's not necessarily because they, they just don't Give know. Them the way. Exactly. Yeah. So again, and that's something we've, we've actually, we've had a, we've actually effectively done several, several departmental areas this year. Uh, there was a problem. We brought in some people. Uh, we actually did a an, an external review of a, of a uh, an internal department this year, and at the end of the day, we found record keeping problems. Now, those, thank God, there was no other fundamental issue, so we uh, fixed it. We put it on track, and there we go. So, we're actually doing these kinds of things, and, and again, um, when you have as many things to go through, uh, so, I, but I think we're making progress, and, and it's something that I think we'll want to continue to talk about. During this yeah, what I was going to suggest is I'll, I, I'm, you know, I'm keeping notes. I'd like to kind of get an update. Maybe it's the first meeting in March or something, and we'll just spend some time on this. We'll, we'll get an update on the student activities fund and, and any of these other things that are in progress. There's some steps that have been made, and then we can discuss whether we need to consider. Well, again, Finding to Karen's another point, way of though, I, it done, I think that because I agree with Karen. Yeah, I think it's the you know we're not going to hire an internal auditor, but finding a resource that's a short-term resource, bring it in and get it the work done, and move on, and then get internal <coughs> pieces together so we can do the review ourselves from time to time, and that's the goal. Um, and again, they've, they've offered to help, so I'm going to take full advantage of that. So okay. We're not going to have. Okay. Um, police and fire detail receivables. Uh, this is one of those ones that you asked earlier, is there another type of receivable that could have a write-off? Mm -hmm. This is yeah. one of those, depending mm -hmm. on how diligent you are in collecting receivables and, and how long before somebody comes in. So um, policies, procedures related to that. So we had some findings related to uh, police and fire not being reconciled in total to the ledger. And it's important that's done on a timely basis because a lot of times you'll have a negative cash position because you paid the officer, firefighter, and the, the vendor hasn't paid the bill yet. So as long as that comes in, theoretically, both of these funds should be a zero balance. Mm -hmm. So it would be negative cash of $23,000, but you have $23,000 worth of receivables. If everybody pays their bill, we're good. we're good. If that detailed receivables and stuff maintained by the police and fire departments aren't reconciled to the general ledger, and an evaluation of the collectability of those old outstanding receivables aren't made on a timely basis, we're not sure, we are not sure whether or not there's a deficit. And so uh, it's just one of those policies. Right now, uh, during uh, 14, the police uh, department is reconciling with the, um, um, the town's ledges. Fire still has needs some work on, but you always have to still be aware of uh, any potential deficits that are in there based on, and you can always do a cutoff at any point in time to sit back and say, all right, I'm going to take and make sure that at, you know, at November 30th, these were the last offices that we paid. We billed everything that was up through that particular date, and then take a look at subsequent receipts to see whether or not you collected that and you go down to zero. 
And we recommend that that's done on a periodic basis. Mm -hmm. Is officer compensation uh, on a detail numbered on an on a, uh, invoice or PO basis? In other words, is there a matching documentation? I believe so. I believe so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you know which bill goes out for us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. There's a separate yeah. payroll on that. Yeah, they have the DTS office yeah. 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 Okay. Sometimes that and one of the other things we've done, and, and we've talked about it here, is that we're now using, if someone's not paying in detail, it, that counts like not paying your tax bill, mm -hmm. and we'll hold a town license or other thing from them. So right. that's been effective yeah. in yeah. driving yeah. payments. Yeah. Uh, but, but again, the closer we are to reconcile, the easier it is to get the money. Right. So. Uh, Again, yeah. And fire, by the way, the fire does not. There's not that many. I actually asked what a fire. They, they have was. some old bills that we have to look. Yeah. At. So, right. so sometimes there's an ambulance for like an event, right? Yeah. Or right. Uh, so there's not many of those, and they're actually um, that's the last piece to get done. So this will be another one that'll be knocked off. And, uh, and, and, and just for clarification, fire. I think I know the answer. Um, is the police and fire? They they're doing their own billing right. and their own collections mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. internally in their own department. Yeah. But why? Because they've been doing it. But why? I mean, isn't that a duplication of efforts? We've got a we've got a, a finance department that bills and collects. Well, they, what happens? Uh, the police department does it because they're the ones that assign the details. So they're the ones that will bill it. But like in situate, the collect the police department will bring it over to the collector's office to be committed for collection. Right. I, I recognize that. Yeah. I'm asking about really the duplication of resources. That's one thing we, we, do, we yeah. don't have the billing software. They have the billing software yeah. there because it's integrated with their... Well, I, I, I think this could probably be set up as a separate account. I mean, if given that it's not it's not direct payroll, right? It's not... Yes, it's, it's direct payroll. It goes through it payroll, payroll, but not a, but as detailed. So who payroll? runs payroll? Hmm? Who runs payroll? Oh, it still goes through payroll. I mean, yeah, they don't do, do the, the payroll. payroll. Yeah. No, the ta so the town runs payroll? Yes. I'm back to the same thing. It seems to me like a duplication mm -hmm. of resources. Now, nobody's, we're not double, nobody's making out an invoice twice. No, no, one no, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not asking about that. Well, I, I'm actually really thinking want. about manpower. Kind of yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. Well, I guess yeah. it's yeah. the best yeah. use of resources, mm -hmm. and right. it's the best yeah. use of resources for our police yeah. to be doing billing. Yeah. I, no and it's, it's you know, where is the risk in that, too? I mean, we're, we're talking about risk assessment. Well, it's again, you know, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a, to the extent that you, we can narrow down the, the points where um, billing and collections flow, mm -hmm. then I would, I would think that, that our focus could be ever closer with respect to risk assessment. It's a fair point. Okay. Mm -hmm. We'll move on, but we'll keep continuing Thanks. this conversation because yeah, it's, 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 it's an interesting. Thing you, 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 you're bringing up points for discussion later, and I, I appreciate that. That's well, part of the fun. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Take notes. Well, actually, we had a client that uh, I had a deputy for all the, the all the old tax, motor vehicle, etc. that left it, and to get to work, they just said, you know what? Give us all your old police detail stuff, mm. and. You get your money back, and they make yeah. money, but okay. it's, it's it's an assessment to the people that haven't paid. Yeah. So it's really not a okay. you know difficult thing mm -hmm. to okay. accept sometimes that if you find some old ones that aren't paying. Um, did he have to purchase auto policy? Um, what we found is that uh, there really wasn't a good solid policy about when's a purchase order required. What's the dollar levels, depending mm -hmm. on the approvals as you go through? You don't want to buy all the purchase order, go to purchase office and stuff like that to make sure that he signs off on it. So there needs to be a standardized policies. And some of the things that we found is that in that testing, you might have a purchase order that wasn't done at all. A purchase done, a lot of done after the bill was paid. <laughs> yeah. kind of and again, it's not a lot, yeah. but those are the type of things that, again, that's a normal occurrence when you don't have a policy. Well, so, and we also had no PO system, as far as I know, yeah. mm -hmm. but it, four wait, years, we, five we, years ago. Were, are, we, are we talking about a relatively current review? Yeah, that would have been last year. And okay. Okay. So, so, so we, we is we don't have a control. We we do, would not have had a control in place at that point that would have prevented the payment without a PO. We would look at it, we would, we would see the invoice did not have a purchase order. Well, to me and then we'd get permission from the <coughs> town manager or the department head. They just didn't do it. They ordered it, they used it. We can't just not pay the bill. So Evidence of breakdown in controls. Yeah. I, can, yeah. I can tell you that this, didn't yeah. come, this stuff didn't come across my desk 
there was no nothing of any substance that came across my no. desk at all that I right. recall no. uh, in the last at least the last six months of the fiscal year when I was here. Um, I, I think it, it, it's gotten. I think it was getting better clearly as, as I because it was new last. 13, 14. Right, right. One of the things that Mary and I did recognize, though, early on is that there's so many coming across my desk and hers that for de minimis amounts of money. Uh, I mean, not, not that I want people to know the that we're looking at every $5 purchase. Right. 500 or less. We, and this right now, the software won't work. We can't put a dollar threshold on it. Yeah. We'd like to. I see. Uh, because it would greatly streamline the process, and people would stop complaining about the fact that. I don't sit at my computer waiting for people to send a purchase. So, <laughs> so there's sometimes when it'll take a couple of days before yes. I'll actually see something. And I understand that we have to, you know, the, the pro and particularly with REC. I mean, uh, now that we've gotten REC onto the process. In fact, this year we actually moved the last two big pieces on. Yeah, I think. Uh, all the departments uh, are on it. They, they so weren't right. until this year. So that, so mm -hmm. now that everyone is now on the system, it's definitely functioning better. And we're still trying to now make it work even better. That's the goal. Okay. Okay. And we're using software to a much better extent than we were a year ago. Okay. But they still have a problem where we want that 500 threshold and they can't, software can't do it. So we're working on it. We're working, we're working on it. Okay. Up until now, I'm still signing off on $5.47 purchase mm -hmm. orders. Mm -hmm. it's it's not at least they have a PO. They do. Okay. Yes, but we don't know if it came in after the fact, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not asking that question. Rome wasn't built. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, employee reimbursement that's pol that's policy. Uh, what we found is that, you know, sometimes employees go out and buy something for the department they have to do, or travel. But we saw all kinds of different ways that were being reimbursed, what was being purchased, and we didn't see a consistent process and policy that should be the same regardless of what department you work for. So when the accounting department takes a look at it, they're looking at the same thing, standard set of documentation, what's required in order to get reimbursed, when is it appropriate for you to actually incur expenses on mm -hmm. behalf of the department mm -hmm. you know if you know public works or something like that or something happens and there's a pipe that broke and they need to get down a local hardware store to get you know to the plumbing supply station to get a valve or something like that well you you're not going to be chasing him down for the 112 dollar purchase order because the water's right. coming out so there's, there's sometimes needs for that but there hadn't been a standard policy and procedures relative to employee uh, don't, don't going through and buying it and then getting it reimbursed. So what we wanted to do is see consistently across the board and set a policy and procedure on that. Uh, as management indicated in the response, uh, that has been done in fiscal year 2015. Um, and they're implementing that procedure. Again, one of those ones we haven't audited yet. Uh, but obviously in our conversations, they know they know what they're doing relative to standardizing this process. So. I would expect this one to be well, gone. Formally sent it out yet because okay. we were waiting for that five hundred dollar threshold. Well, one, of things, that, yeah. one of the things, for example, is uh, is meals. We do senior meals, and people are putting these reimbursements. So, like, why am I signing off on thirty of these stop and shop things? Why don't we just have an account? Well, we we do <laughs> now. We had we actually had accounts at some departments, but not all of them. So, you know, Paul has been very aggressive in working on these so we get standardized accounts. So you know, we don't have to go through this reimbursement process. I don't want people to be out money. I mean happen with other people who are very dedicated employees but I'm like don't put your money after that unless something's on fire or <laughs> leaking yeah. so we should, I, I don't want you to have to you know go through that and wait and we were doing it with travel too uh, we're you know and there's not that not there's a lot of travel going on the same thing with, with uh, mileage reimbursement there really was nothing in place it's like what rate do we pay at mm -hmm. so we picked the IRS rate that's what we said with because yeah. yeah. it's a standard rate it's yeah. fair it's actually a little high right now because gas prices have come down so <laughs> but uh, but it, we're in the, we're doing those things. Right. We just don't have it all in a nice fancy manual that's released. But we will. Yeah. When, by the time it officially it's comes back, written. it'll be there. Okay. Great. So, Thank you. Uh, enhanced controls over paper throw bag inventory public works. We just saw a risk relative to you know purchasing a bag but having no controls over how many bags were sold, the inventory of the bag. So at any point in time, um, you know the auditor or anybody else should be able to go in, see what's come in count the number of bags, and that should relate, and we should be able to reconcile for the bags purchased, just to strengthen the internal controls over a, a high-risk area whenever you're dealing with cash. I'm not saying anything was going wrong, we didn't have any indication of that, but there's a, one of those doors open from internal controls that need to be closed, 
right? And yeah. just just as importantly, you know, honest employees could get a, a, you know what? A dispersion cast their way with yeah. because the, there is no the honest control employees control. usually welcome these. Yeah. And not to say that you wouldn't have any dishonest employees, but um, I'm saying that, oh, good. Now I, there's no question that no great, we have controls over it. Does that mean there's not going to be some bags destroyed, right. disappeared, etc.? That's going to be part of the normal right. process. Yep. But it, it, it's something that you can control and right. say, right, we haven't lost the bags and things like that. So I think, again, something we, this is one of those ones we want to take a good look at next year mm -hmm. because of the risk associated with the collection of cash and make sure the bag and the inventory are working as, as designed. Would this be over the total inventory? Because we, we have off-site sales uh, yeah, as well. Yeah, we I mean, local retail. that would be with them that too. It would, would be accounted for. No. Okay. Yeah. That's actually more accounted for now than. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. So, We've already started. We've already had yeah. some bad accounts. So the management's response uh, is this again something that. We expect to be completed this year. Yeah. Oh yeah, be pretty soon in fact, because we've already done accounts and are in the process of it's one of those reconciling things reconciling with the legend. It's one of the things that, that the initial is like you, you expect to scatter every bag? Yeah, I do. And then we're done <laughs> and then we're clean and then we don't Never have to worry about retail. It. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, this is what um, so yes, that's yeah, we've already started. As, as Mary pointed out, we've already started. So. Yeah, you got back with the thank you. Comment your comments. Uh, enterprise fund indirect cost allocations. Yeah, please, uh, please. bring them. Uh, this is uh, clearly something we need. Right. We've needed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and so in the past it's been an estimate, uh, and it may or may not be reasonable. What's there? One of the bigger things that the Department of Revenue has been looking at for all the communities, and they've done studies on that, is how much the water sewer, other enterprise funds, mm -hmm. has been legitimately charged for the cost mm -hmm. of providing indirect services to mm -hmm. Mary's time, Chris's time, your time, all the other expenses, along with um, health insurance, pension allocations, there's all kinds of things that go into that. Um, and realistically, you should have a formal indirect cost allocation plan. It doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to go down to the last penny. But it's something that Makes sense, and that use allocation basis that makes sense. Whatever cost that you're allocating, uh, it doesn't mean that Mary has to spend her time saying, "I, I spent nine minutes on this today, etc." They get a general sense of what mm -hmm. they do. You come to an agreement, and what you'll find is that there's a chance that you may be undercharging or overcharging an enterprise fund. And the Mass Rules relative to enterprise funds basically says that uh, the general fund can subsidize uh, an enterprise fund but the enterprise fund shouldn't be subsidizing the, the general fund mm -hmm. because you're going to use a fee. So it's a, <coughs> it's a policy to send money from the general fund if you want to subsidize, excuse me, <coughs> to subsidize the enterprise fund, but it can't go the other way. There was a cost allocation structure established and voted three years ago, Peter? Three or four years ago. Yeah. yeah. Um, whether or not it, it, it uh, covers every actual expenditure, it does exist. And that's just as a point of clarification. Mm -hmm. I, mean, uh, I could be wrong on this, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, well, but I believe that yeah, the, it's the it's allocation... Was thrown out. It was thrown out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so it was voted was and promptly ignored. Every time we went to use it. So, so we're, we're going we're we're to get we're one in place and follow and ignore that one. No, we're going to follow. <laughs> I, 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 prefer, I prefer to actually follow them. Who voted it? Uh, was it, was it I, this is all board, pre. The board of selectmen. Yeah. This is pre me. Was so, it? No, I was saying no. It was the board of selectmen. Uh, it was created by the uh, chairman of the advisory committee, the chairman of the capital budget committee, the uh, chairman of the board of water commissioners, and sewer. Sewer. I, I I don't know if sewer was involved mm -hmm. because it, it actually allocated costs strictly for water. Mm -hmm. And so, so something that we want to put into practical application, and Mary, correct me if I'm wrong, but mm -hmm. I'm remembering back, and it's been a, a while since I've looked at it months, um, but I believe the 2014 amount and the 2013 amount were the exact same amount of allocation? No, there's two and a half percent more. Two and a half percent <coughs> more. Okay, so, um, so there's a little bit of a change relative to that, but it's one of those things that should be addressed. Once it's approved, you do a consistent mm -hmm. basis. Everything else. And we don't have there. to reinvent well, the wheel because I know yeah. a lot of communities have 
you know. Right. No, I've already worked up a couple, you know, a couple of ways larger, we can do the allocation. It just the larger it point in all of this is an adopted policy is an adopted policy, and once it's ignored, you have a material loss of control. Right. So, uh, next point: improve controls over the disposal of town assets. There was a school bus that was sold last year. It didn't go through. Like I said earlier, same procurement issues that we talked about earlier, it's still governed by the same rules in 30B. The specific things that have to be done whenever you dispose of surplus property, um, and we can believe it was followed and, and, and the correct. Doesn't mean that the sale wasn't okay and you got that. We see a lot of places now going through and putting stuff that have an auction sites on their own website um, that go through and say, and once it's determined it's surplus, so there's a process you need to follow. Uh, and what we'd like to see is obviously that incorporated with the purchasing side up front to make sure that the documentation is there. Uh, these, these can cause big problems sometimes. Um, I have another community that uh, we committed to do, we're going to do a special audit where um, they sold like three old vehicles and an employee ended up buying the three vehicles for like 400 bucks. In total, right? And then somebody, in effect, called up a contractor that wanted to buy them, and so this is, you know, those are the type of things that can happen, and, and they didn't go through the process, and and again, the, the the, there's a policy in place yeah. here as well that uh, an asset disposed uh, refunds its value back to the capital stabilization fund. So you know, it's one of the reasons why. Uh, a policy is nice. What I just found out was policies really don't matter all that much, right? <laughs> um, and so, you know, we, we to the extent that we actually follow our own guidelines, then things like this should work. I, Chris, do you happen to know if the transfer was made back to the capital stabilization fund? No. Uh, no. I, I don't. And, uh, Who got the money? No, it hasn't. It, by mass general laws, it just goes to cash, and I didn't know of General's any policy, so it would have to be appropriated at town Has meeting. Has it come back to your cash account? Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, thank yeah. you. So it would have to go through town meeting to then. Right. Well. I, 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 oh, yeah, yeah that's what it, I say it goes back to the stabilization mm -hmm. fund, no matter what, it still has to be mm -hmm. voted. Right. Yeah, right. Okay. Right. It came back to the town now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we've yeah. started conversations across oh, the way yeah. to make sure that <laughs> the folks on the school side are talking school. to us. Thank you. Yeah, my understanding was that the, the, the school committee, because I reached out to Paul, um, the school committee chair, just to find out, you know, because I knew this would be like, what? Um, and, you know, Dave has his procurement license, and my understanding was they went through the process with the school committee who approved it. and and. I'm, my understanding is that's wrong, and then they, is that wrong, the, the, is that the, part, is that the process? We have, we, we have to clarify process? the process okay. with them. And but the process is state law, and yes. then mm -hmm. to Steve's point, we may also have an additional Require, local requirement, requirement yes. in town that it won't go to cash, as Mary said, that it would, it would go to the capital stabilization fund, the reason the disposal that, of the asset. The reason that this has such a significance with respect to capital is more than a decade ago, the town determined that capital, regardless of department, would be voted at town meeting, but also funded by the town as a whole. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the recycle is that that uh, the disposition of capital then also refunds its source. Right. Um, once you lose control of that. It may seem like nothing, a residual value, but that residual value is lost to refunding the capital. In essence, what it's saying is all capital belongs to the town throughout its life cycle, and at the end of its life cycle, its value belongs to the town, and then is recycled back to, to highest priority. That's why it's so important. Yeah, absolutely. Well, again, this, the important thing is, again, this identif self-identification, identifying and finding a problem and fixing it. Right. So. I'm actually on a quick digression. Just signed up for the last three days of the certification course, so uh, in early February. So I'll actually go through the final certification process, hopefully by March. So I'll, I'll be certified, and, and I think we're getting Diane finally to get her official certificate. So two of us. Still have side. initials after yes, your name. Yes, very <laughs> fancy. Yes. A man of letters. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, the last. Uh, the point for this year, improved financial controls in the office of elders and peers. 
This is one of the ones that we were asked to go visit and take a look at the operations out there. What we found out there is that uh, some cash for some of the events uh, were being held, not turned over to the treasurer. And we looked at the expenditures that came out of those, those, those funds that were held. And we found that they were all being spell, spent on elder affairs issues. However, it, it has an effect of circumventing the normal warrant process. We didn't find any, you know, uh, anything significantly wrong with any of the expenditures uh, that weren't in compliance with what would have been approved if they went through a revolving fund. Mm -hmm. So if there was a revolving fund that was set up, the money would have been deposited into that. Expenditures would have gone through the normal process and everything would have been okay. So we always take a look at it from a practical standpoint to make sure that you know the, the expenditures themselves were valid expenditures. If they had been a, a processed through the normal cycle, yeah. would they have been approved? And, and, and we came to the conclusion it would have been. So it's bad accounting, bad process. Once we let management know and they became aware of it, immediate action was taken to change the process, let the accounting go through. So uh, I think this is, yeah. Okay. Just to tie this together, that was the source of the revolving fund? It was, mm -hmm. a, it was an accelerator. Yes. Thank you. Okay, so that's just something that uh, has been corrected and, and gone. We had to put it in here, but uh, I believe that's uh, going to be resolved next year. And the last piece is just the um, uh, informational comment. I already talked about it with the OPEB pension coming down the road, how it's going to change your financial statements. We already discussed that in depth, so that goes through. Terrific. Mm -hmm. Our we, may not, we may have nothing for you to look at next year. Yeah. Or to look yeah. at. It won't be as long. No, it won't. I mean, it's, it's, it's already been tremendous progress. Like that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, any additional Does questions? Does any of the boards have, board members have any questions? Mm -hmm. I think this is very good. So can I answer? Yeah, but you didn't need to come up. Sorry. Because <laughs> people at home can't hear. And, and, and you need to identify yourself. <laughs> I can hear you. I just have three questions. Uh, yep. On, I asked them before the meeting uh, on the hard assets, on the inventory. I know that the budget planning group. Uh, the budget, the budget committee, uh, capital budget committee, has some type of inventory. I feel it's very necessary that we have our inventory. Was we rolling stock? We have between two to three million dollars of rolling stock, and somebody should have responsibility for these pieces. And then we also have other assets. It may be sound silly, but you should come up with a number that we, anything under anything anything under or over fifty fifty dollars should be reported on an inventory, and including the schools. We should have this. This stuff, it goes and, and talking, it comes and goes, and you don't know where it is. Right. Well, I, think I think we have some of it all at UConn, yeah. but, but you're talking like computers or telephones or. Correct. Everything we have. With, with, with that, that's, that's a very good point. It's one, I think the, the chairman of the capital budget committee is here as well, and, and Peter may weigh in on this, but I think that actually falls under the, the, the entire concept of risk assessment. Mm -hmm. It, we don't, uh, it, to the best of my knowledge, we don't have a receiving system. I understand right. that. Okay. So inventory, <coughs> from an accounting standpoint, point falls into a black hole once it gets here. And it has for years. And the thing is, as long as we're working towards <laughs> something to get it going, that would be important. Set more sites. Today. Thank you. <laughs> uh, some other things here on the cash. We keep talking about cash uh, controls. I know that we can eliminate the cash controls and we a little hardship at first, but I, I still am pushing the credit card machines and checks. Most, it's not a summer bill. You can't deal with cash at all. And if you go for a billing permit, if you don't have a check. Well, that's because it's summer Well, <laughs> they're pretty modern. They're pretty modern. But the thing is that uh, uh, it should be a check or a credit card. It costs money for a credit card machine, I know that. But it relieves the responsibility of the employee of the money. Yes, it's a little bit of the county, but the DPW could be started there, and it was, I thought it was going to be started there, but that was four years ago. But we'll see what happens. I mean, I just, this should be worked on. It's not a big deal to set it up. And the other one, I didn't hear it, my hearing aid might have been, the four million dollars, a little over four million dollars, unsecured with our accounts. Has that been secured now in, in the protected, insured accounts? Well, I mean, there's, again, you have to ask, ask the treasurer where those uninsured amounts are, but I mean, that's a normal occurrence when you sit back and evaluate the risk and you evaluate the banks, the security right. of the banks, whether or not it's going down. 
uh, a lot of money in uh, the, the state treasurer's accounts. Um, so, and obviously there's not a lot of investment income you make right now anyways. <laughs> and so it's a cost benefit from the standpoint of is it secured, isn't secured, and, and, and is this insured. So uh, we didn't see a significant issue with that. You weren't concerned with I was okay. not concerned just, with that, but I it's obviously it. a pause, you know, that, that whether or not you keep everything in. Risk profile is pretty well covered in a, in a cash policy. Right. Mm -hmm. I just, I saw that. I was concerned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Paula, just as a point of clarification, the, the balance uninsured, is that primarily an investment balance or investment yes, balance? but it's also in one of the banks, but they're all Vero Bank, Green. Uh, that particular bank is the three star, the yeah. highest okay. rating in Vero Bank. Yeah. And believe me, if one of those banks run into any kind of trouble, there'll be five up on my door knocking. <laughs> 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 but we have subscribed to Vero Bank, so I know about it as well. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Overall, it was great news and great progress, and we will promise to get all of these taken care of. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to come into the present and um, have Chris um, and, yes. and Mary and Paula. Join us to discuss um, <laughs> our current fiscal year, fis fiscal year 15, um, and our first six months. Um, and excuse me, okay. I just, I just want to say I'm, I'm going to try to pull it up on my computer and, and, and try to begin the transition to uh, digitally looking at this stuff as opposed to using all the papers. That's nice. They were all sent out. Oh, yeah, out we don't. Yeah, we don't have our copies. Well, I, I do have, have, I I do have some of it here. Yeah. You have it? Yeah. Um, so um, we try to slightly tweak the format this time, um, and um, both with the first a little cover memo and then organizing them in a certain order so people can go through them as they want uh, with stuff in the simplest format to be literally line by line. I like the simple format. Uh, mm -hmm. um, and the highlights very quickly are that, um, and again, this is a super simple highlight, but we're on target. So uh, <laughs> um, uh, you, know, you can go line by line and say things that are higher or lower, and I can do specific reasons, but as an overall entity, we're on target, both on the revenue and expenditure side. Um, and uh, some of the positive signs that I highlighted that I'll, I'll mention quickly, um, Sewer enterprise revenue collections are up uh, over the same period year to year um, by about a third, which is very good. Mm -hmm. Water is up about 20% year to year, uh, which is also very good in terms of pure collections. Um, and I think water and sewer have, sewer could have continued to add customers over, over the year, so that's part of that. Part of it is that, and with water, clearly we had a dry fall. Remember, we're collecting money at the quarter lag. So we're seeing the increase. And if you look at one of the little charts that was there, you'll see a little spike in blue, mm -hmm. which is good. Um, something we had nothing to do with, but we're definitely a recipient of. The Baker administration, its first one of its first acts, released $100 million in Chapter 90 road funding that had been approved by the legislature, but not released by the... All coming to us. Uh, I wish. <laughs> uh, yeah. We'd definitely be able to pay every We get 100000 times. 100 million, right? um, we're getting 105000 um, which Carl is eager to spend, but not tomorrow. So, uh, <laughs> is that something? My understanding, and I know that the, the money was held up. Is that something we're going to get a check for hundred five thousand dollars? Are we going to get thirty and twenty? It's a reimbursement, so we spend it for ourselves. We spend, we get it. But we could conceivably, yes, get the hundred thousand oh, dollars yeah, as soon as we expend it. Yeah. Yeah. Probably, I, I mean, you know, sometimes if we have a bigger project, Carl likes to get the pot of money together and then spend cash. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll, we'll go. We're talking about it, so it's it's, it's great. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's basically a 50% increase so uh, for, for one year. And we'll cross our fingers for the future. Um, and then again, something I think we've all noticed, obviously the, uh, the rapid decline in oil prices is starting to show mm -hmm. very preliminarily. Uh, our, our expenses on oil and gas and heating are flat or lower. Um, and it's not like we're using less. Um, it has not been any particularly warmer winter so far. And we most certainly are not driving any less. And I'm hoping that the trickle-down costs we will start to see throughout the entire economy. And uh, some things we locked in, obviously. You, know, you lock in certain prices like asphalt and things. I'm hoping, though, asphalt is 
as an oil-based mm-hmm. product. Mm-hmm. So hopefully the decrease in costs will start to show in, in the spring on some of our paper products. We'll see. Particularly stuff that we have to bid on, uh, that we don't do ourselves. So um, things that they're watching, just want to highlight a couple of quick ones. Police overtime is running higher than expected. Um, and, and part of that is we've, we've been down a person. We have an academy grad, but he's not graduated. We have a student in the academy, if he's not back yet. And unfortunately, before he got back, we had a gentleman retire. Uh, very big applause, and we mentioned him at the prior meeting. Uh, so they're a little staff tight, and they've also had two medical, short term medical situations the last week <laughs> that have put people out for uh, either a couple of weeks or uh, or less. But it still hurts them. So. Are, we, um, are we posted on the. Uh Replacement for the retired office. Yes, yeah, that's actually in progress. Uh, I signed off on that the other day, mm-hmm. so he's going to go to the academy, and it'll be another mm-hmm. six months before we see him. So, but he's off to the academy. Okay. We'll, uh, Bill uh, proactively reserved a slot uh, too quickly in, in a uh, academy <laughs> because there's not that many of them. So, it, 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 the timing worked out well. So, Is, um, by any vague, I mean. Such an outlandish chance, but are, are either of these local? They're both. They're both local. They're both local. That's what I was amazing. Yes, they're That's both what local. I was in fact, the third one in the queue is also local. Excellent. Oh, yes, yes. They're both local. Excellent. Um, I'm very pleased to hear that. Aspen Co has high school graduates. Yeah. Yes. That's what I was going to tell you uh, because I was at the uh, uh, ad hoc police meeting and we talked at length about the, the young men that he hired, and they're very good. And uh, the chairman asked about women, and apparently there was no list you could get. So I guess everybody's looking for women. Hey, sign, jump in, sign up, take the test. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, now, on the fire department side, overtime's been running low, which is good. But there was an unplanned retirement that's occurring in a week or two, and we'll uh, congratulate that gentleman when he's officially retired. I think everybody knows who he is. Um, that's got placed a little bit of pressure on the numbers. Uh, plus, He's one of the last people who have a big have a buyout of vacation sick time of any substance, so it's going to cost us a little bit of money. Mm-hmm. Um, we're transitioning in IT. Um, uh, Mr. Bennell uh, will wrap up with us officially by the end of the month, uh, and we're in the process of transitioning. So but one of the things we're transitioning to is, is bringing some outside services to provide support. For example, network management and maintenance, and that's going to be happening by a third-party provider. And um, so the money's not quite aligned how we'd like it to be. It's not that it's not going to be there, but it's not in the right lines. And as we talked right. about before, I, I'm, we're very constrained. So I'm, I've already talked to Peter about coming to his uh, his committee to release some money. We'll probably end up putting it back in at the end of the year, but I need it now to be able to, to spend. Um, and plus, we're you know, the, this quite frankly, the system has expanded to our to the good. You know, we have 21st century classrooms and we have other IT infrastructure that needs to be maintained and supported. And, we do have to recognize the reality is it's going to cost a little bit more. It may not be full-time people on site, but we do have to have that support mechanism in place. So uh, I'm just letting you know that. Um, the bus state budget s- situation is still fluid. Uh, obviously, the governor uh, has not released anything. He's only been in office a week, so I guess we give him a little, little, little slack. But um, uh, while everyone has said a thousand times over that no cuts this year, no cuts this year, no cuts this year, um, we'll see what they mean for the future. So. Um, so I, something to bear watch. You know, I think one um, very positive sign with the current governor, um, other than chap- the chapter 90, he, he was a selectman, um, you know, in his mm-hmm. previous life. So I think he understands and really um, gets what how important local aid is. And, uh, you know, I don't think he'll really won't pull any <laughs> punches with local aid monies. I mean, I think that I think that all those signs are. I agree with you, Diane. I think that's what that's what he's been saying. And he gets it. You know, you know, when you sat in your seat, it's a different thing. You know, uh, and um, the um, the um, legislature feels much the same. Obviously, don't know that. <laughs> that's their bread and butter, right? Local aid. That's where they come from. So, uh, I just and again, I keep Dr. Schubert keeps sending me his updates. He watches that state revenue number more more tightly than the Department of Revenue does. But. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, I, and we're opti- I'm, getting, I, I, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic, but we just have to be paying attention. It's just something we should stay uh, pay attention. And again, as we talked about a little bit before from a risk management point of view, human resources support continues to grow. I've up to hours again this month because we need them as we continue to move. It's one of these things you fix something and you find that there's four other things you still need to do, and then that develops into more ongoing support, which is good because it's we've been I- able to identify and address situations, some of which have been longstanding, some of which are new, putting things into place that we had otherwise not done. 
I, I meet now with uh, Paula and some of her staff on a pretty regular basis <laughs> to go over routine personnel stuff, which had never happened before. And it, so it's good, mm -hmm. but it's going to mean that uh, I am going to be recommending that we have more revenue available, more resources available, uh, because we just need to. It, it, it's really kind of come to that for 2016. And in a good way, it's a good thing. It's going to save us money, <laughs> but, um, but it's going to cost us more in the short term. So just to let you know that. So it's, it's a good news that a pricing news thing. So, um, so th there are three um, sheets that are the one page year to date. Uh, Do you have something to add? Yeah, okay. specifically on, on these sheets. So go ahead. Go, uh, there's We're up to it. The, uh, the only particular anomaly that jumps off the page is excise tax, uh, which is. Because uh, it all comes in in March. Yeah, yeah because is that, yeah, is that, <laughs> that's how I just looked for an explanation. <laughs> exactly. That's, so that's fine. Yep. Thank you. And the, only, the other piece uh, it goes down toward. Uh, employee benefits where um, you know our expenditures uh, generally look fairly low versus this point in the year at 37 percent of expected <coughs> it's actually the reverse mm -hmm. right we've mm -hmm. actually it's yeah. we've actually yeah. expended 63 yeah. percent okay yeah so yeah I know it, it, it's because it's backwards on an yeah. expenditure well, well, positives yeah. and negative does that make sense? Um, yeah. Fair enough. The way it's right, yeah, right, yeah. and it's workers' comps included in there, which is paid at the beginning of the year. And Again, I'm, I'm, I'm simply looking for the explanation. Yeah. On, okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, this, um, this report yes. was always backwards to me. I, it, well, it is kind of backwards, yeah. and, and that's one of those things that are yeah, that are not that are that are cyclical, not not monthly. I can just switch it around the other way if you'd like. It yeah, probably would be easier because I think Since it does. It's in the expenditure bucket. Yeah. Oh, excuse me, just Accountants just have that. I like, just it, I like it this way. Crazy. Southright does do it the other way, but I like it this way. But I'll switch it around. I'm sorry. No, no, no actually, Southright no does it the, right the, the way we want it. So, so I, I look yeah. at it from the perspective that we've, we've pulled in on property taxes $17 million, which is more than half of what we budgeted. Mm -hmm. And you look at an unfavorable number as a head script. Yeah, it just, you know, it it just, just boggles <laughs> my mind. I, can't. I know. Well, it's just unfavorable <laughs> towards budget because you still have X amount to collect. Yeah, no. <laughs> you still have 48 percent. Accounts just never, nothing's ever rosy. Yeah. <laughs> right. No, but they only have 48 percent to collect and not 50 percent. So it's like you, you you look at the the sheet, you mm -hmm. know, the the, the mm -hmm. summary sheet, and then you you look at the charts, and everything is everything is up and everything's going well. And then you look at these, and it's like. Everything's in brackets and it's unfavorable. <laughs> and you have to subtract from a hundred. Yeah, you know, you have to go back. But you know. when you get to the bottom, we are favorable. Yes. I want, I want to ask you what this by nine hundred and six thousand. This is very good. What is the special assessments? Those are the Wonderful. betterments. There's a betterments. You have drainage betterments, the oh, central okay. sewer, okay. and north. So it's the it's the um, water and sewer. Oh. Um, yeah, the one that up in the revenues, you have the special sure. assessments. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this summer was an especially dry summer. And fall so was too. Mm -hmm. Fall. Well, so yeah. both water and sewer are benefiting from that because sewer is calculated off the use of water, but that's not something you can count on for right, no, the, no, the upcoming right. season. So the budgeting yeah. figures yeah. would... But the good news, though, is that... Um, that's money collected, right? Oh, it's absolutely. Back, mm -hmm. right? It's, you know, and we're going to our slower period anyway because we're, you know, the next two quarters are winter, spring. And the good news is the expense line is remaining steady. Yes. Right. right. Exactly. Yeah. I and guess and right. they will start collecting on, the, on their water and sewer liens also, and sewer will start collecting on their betterments. I mean, it would be quarters, it would so. be nice to think that you know maybe that re the revenues would would continue, but I think it's more realistic to. To think that for budgeting purposes going forward and everything. Oh, you should have to be conservative. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, I wouldn't recommend that they leap to new high numbers. No, However, absolutely not. No. Yeah. We want them to generate uh, retained earnings. Retain yeah. earnings, especially and then water. Next yeah. year in the FY16, they start to have that fall off in debt payments. So yeah. They got to benefit from yeah. that. But we but won't have that discussion again tonight. No, no, I know. That's. Yeah. <laughs> we'll leave that to the <laughs> if you go back and you know, it, I mean, it, this is one of the things that had come up at the, at the time. From a budgeting standpoint, the question is always, well, what's the number for the enterprise fund? What's mm -hmm, the mm -hmm, use number? Mm -hmm. And it's not a dollar figure because you don't use dollars, you use volume. Right. right? Mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. you go back over the course of, let's say for the sake of argument, five years, or you could go for over 10 years, you can actually figure out the volume on a per household basis mm -hmm. and then impute it based upon the numbers of households that exist today. Right. Mm -hmm. And from that perspective, that smooth number should take out the dry, do you, do you recall, wet summers. Do you, do you recall the graph that John McDad did way back when? Yeah. 
and it was, you know, it was just that kind of thing, but it was a wave graph, and it showed right. the highs and the lows, mm -hmm. and then the, the median. Yeah. And you remember the projection they did that went like this? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's stick to our first six months, months that's that's why you instead like of the enterprise budgeting. But the point, the point <laughs> is that uh, you, you hit it right on the head. Um, this is one year. The good news is not actually the revenues. The right. good news is the expense line. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And if we have retained earnings, it helps. Yes, those years that you don't get the, yep. the money in, your revenue deficit is covered. I have, I have asked them to squeeze every single dollar they can. Um, and I know that they want, they have put it, so I'm optimistic. And we resolve these that. indirect costs <laughs> finally forever. Yeah, yeah. 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 well, I, I don't think it's anything for ever, forever, right? Well, yeah, for, yeah, for, <laughs> for the short term ever. <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh, well, I think, I mean, you probably already knew it, but it was interesting to me to hear uh, from Mr. Sullivan that. The DOR has d has done that. That they have some things. Oh yes, that you they can went look. out. You know, I did it. Mm -hmm. Several, lots of towns. Yeah, cities and towns to check their indirects. So, mm -hmm. so we have we got to benefit from the stuff that's come out of that, and we'll follow their. Yeah. You know, do, do they? I mean, I know years ago they came in and did a management review several years mm -hmm. ago when I wasn't here. Um, do they do that kind of thing for the town for the indirect costs? I don't know. We have. Not. I don't think so. They no, were doing it more on DOR. No. Yeah, DOR was mostly going around to make sure towns were not fluffing up the indirect costs, so mm -hmm. that the enterprise funds were subsidizing. Because they, they'd noticed, you know, why yeah. do some towns got big, huge numbers for indirect, others yeah. small. So they're basically doing that. I, whether they do one, they might. I have no idea. We can always ask. I, yeah, the worst they can say is no. Mm -hmm. Um, any, any other questions on the, the year to date summaries? Of anything on the uh, graphs or charts? Let me get there. I can only look at one screen okay. at a time. Uh, I actually expect our electricity to be up, to be honest, because our rates have gone up. Yeah. yeah, that was surprising. Given that's just the. Maybe we just haven't been. I mean, my December bill was. I'm a little user, but it was outrageous. Yeah. Yeah. My, my, my December heat bill was outrageous. Yeah, well, like January is going to have all this cold. Yeah. 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 Next, yeah. The next set of bills is going to have. Well, the past two or three, three bills, my, right. mine have been reflecting the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I had to do it all. Uh, but the, you know, our gas diesel and heating fuel is, is, you know, we're actually lower than last year. We didn't budget, we budgeted higher, obviously. And, uh, mm -hmm. So that's a positive. Um, and we'll see where we'll see where. Mm -hmm. we'll but see your diesel is like. not going down; it's staying up heavily. No, is it? So I mean, we I mean, everything's come down. It's not. Well, down. it's still up with three thousand, about three dollars. Mm -hmm. So that's <laughs> those are those. And uh, any any questions on? And again, then I, I probably shouldn't say anything about this no, chart. No, no, so I want to say I've got to mess the word. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's just good. <laughs> not good if you like. Well, no they can have all they want north of 495 uh, and uh, west of, uh, or north of 90, west of 495, however it works here. So I don't know how many. Yes, no one um, North of the mass plan. And does anyone have any other, uh, any, so where we are at the moment is okay. So um, we're good. Um, our, uh, we're hoping that people will continue to buy cars and maybe they will buy really expensive gas gasoline cars <laughs> uh, in time for March. Um, New car season is upon us, because mm -hmm. uh, that, that's a very, that's mm -hmm. obviously the single biggest piece of our uh, non-tax of our yeah. horses. Mm -hmm. So uh, gas keeps dropping, you're going to see some new boats. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> there we go, yes. And, uh, and permanent, permanent, you know, people think electric cars. permanent <laughs> activity is still, is still strong, and, mm -hmm. um, you know, people are doing renovation, home renovations, they're doing additions, um, and, uh, you know, we know that there are still the properties being turned over at um, the two areas for this development. Home Brothers and Cook. So, mm -hmm. um, so. Good. Any, any other questions where we are at this point? Mm -hmm. uh, it was very complete. Right. Thank you very much. Was that little summary okay? Is that, I love the little summary. summary. That was that great. Was nice. summary. Yeah. I, no, I, I think it's nice. It's nice for, for me because I'm lazy. Yeah, but it's nice, I think, for the public to be able to hear it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and in fact, you know what I'll do? It's, it's um, great I'll post this up. I'll see if I can get this posted tomorrow, so it'll be yeah. up on the website. Good. That'd be great. Very good. Um, maybe the graphs. Maybe yeah, I can post those up too. Yeah. The graphs in that. and the summary are great, and then if people want more information, they can, they can ask for it. Um, Peter? <coughs> Just a comment. Uh, this is the first financial meeting that I really didn't have to ask any questions, because I think this report is now approaches a private industry 
kind of monthly or quarterly report. Uh, gives you all of the relative directions, the vectors that are going on. And literally, I mean, I didn't have to ask a question. It's all explained pretty accurately here for all the major material movers in the budget. And I think it's a huge step forward. Thank you. And I think, you know, the board contributed, uh, you know, to developing this report. I think it's at a place where it's uh, the best well, yeah, it's, it's good for us to keep the yes, conversation. Someone replace Peter with someone else. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. You know, now, I, now I can smile more. <laughs> we like yeah. it. I don't know um, the fuck. Well, and it, it you know, it, it's it, all uh, transparent. Now. It's transparent. Yeah. It's also a much more efficient way to run a meeting, frankly. And, and uh, it's great. And anybody that wants to get, dive into the weeds, um, you know, can do that I've another time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 she was right. Um, okay. Okay. Um, since, since since you're here, we, nope. I, I, we can let you. We can let you go. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you for staying. Thank you for staying. Um, so 16 uh, budget on development. So um, the um, I, I do want to get the uh, yeah. this five year projection stuff up and out, uh, and I have been sharing numbers with the school department so, uh, since yeah. last month. And I had already pre put some of this up. When we were doing our, our budget, um, our fiscal forecasting workshops. In fact, I may even try to schedule one in uh, either later this month or early February. I think it's going to be a good idea. Um, so I, I think our, 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 we're in good shape uh, as we begin to build the budget process for next year. Uh, I, I'm sorry, as we finalize the building of the tenant budgets, uh, which is where we are. Um, in fact, I met with another department today. I met with somebody yesterday. I met with some folks week so um, we're, we're pulling together um, though we're still there's still some pieces coming in you know we don't have the uh, we're not gonna have the senior center analysis done in for another couple of weeks mm -hmm. uh, in final form I actually hope I've already gotten some preliminary stuff so things are coming together well um, so I expect that that to you in, in time but the, the numbers I need obviously to plug in for potential use for the budget um, because of some retirements um, we have a little, interesting, little easing in a couple of areas, which which helps uh, in terms of you know uh, helps us maybe jiggle a little bit around um, and and not have completely upper pressure. I mean, it, when you have a small workforce, you have somebody who's retiring after twenty or thirty years, and they're replaced by somebody junior. There's a, a decent amount of savings, which then can offset other other issues uh, or keep things comparatively flat. Um, the um, there are some areas where I, I've already told you, I think, you know, we, we do need to spend some, uh, devote more resources. IT is just something we do. Um, um, HR is something we do. Um, I think facilities is an area in terms of in terms of technical resources that we do, and, and Peter and his committee made this point last, uh, last spring when we were going through the review of the budget, and I've taken it to heart, and in light of the, um, the uh, challenging staffing situation there at the moment, um, we need to to give Mark some help. So I'm going to be going to Peter again and probably pretty soon and, and asking for a little assistance. Let's go like Santa Claus. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're in such a good mood. I've got to come. Jolly. i got to strike the air. Now that we have Jolly yeah. Peter. Can I get you to sign off on stuff right now? So, um, so uh, but but there there are things I just think we, we need to cover. We, we, we know, uh, you know we, we went for a, a good job. Mary Quill did an outstanding job, basically as a one-woman show, mm -hmm. when she lost her chief assistant. And then her assistant is now out. <laughs> Oh, um, so uh, the good news is that we've hired a, a, a new deputy, which is great. Which is going to be her assistant assistant. Mm -hmm. she, she starts on the mm -hmm. which will be great. Um, uh, but you know, when you have a tight workforce, you know, somebody goes out for any period of time. You, 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 you know, people step up, and yeah. um, there's a lot to step up. Yeah. And yeah. I'm also, I, I, I think, some you know, there was some really again. I, I was very fortunate to step in here. Um, to a, a place that was in good shape and on the, in the going in the right direction. Most certainly, things to do. Um, so, uh, be able to build on some of that. And I, I, I'm going to probably make some recommendations. Brian Joyce and I have been make, sitting down, Brian and I and uh, Carl and Mark, about tweaking how that might operationally work a little bit better mm -hmm. um, and uh, how special services can be finalized. Um, I, I, uh, I'm eager. Actually, we're, we're trying to set up a trip to Weston. I don't want to know if you're free to go. Um, we're looking at a piece of building permitting software. That uh, this is the People Forms People Saw uh, People GIS that we have. They actually it has a whole lot of other applications, and, and, and our 
one of the nearest, our, our nearest neighbors that use it is West, so we just go right up 128 and we'll go there. Um, probably try to set something in a couple weeks, so I'll check your schedules. Um, and and I, I, we really, I think there's an opportunity here to really take a nice big leap on, mm -hmm. on e permitting and also then be able to build a bigger suite, including asset management, the goal is asset management as well. So, um, which I know is something that Steve worked on for a long time as well, and I think it's something that we do need to have in a more yeah. robust way. Um, at the same time, we're going to be moving to you know, this new world of IT. And I've been working very closely with Barbara Cataldo over at the school side to design exactly what it is we need. You know, we've been, the town is here. I actually read the, the, the PowerPoint you did a couple of years back um, about why we needed a collaborative department. I, the two of you mm -hmm. did, actually. And, and I reread it. And I'm like, and, 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 here we, and here we are. And, I, and, I, and so now, we're in three years later. Yeah. <laughs> Change is slow. We're in, two, we're in two point oh now. I will shrug. The, the great the great thing is that it was successful. And now but now we have to just it's bigger, right? And we need to staff it and support it and resource it differently than we did three years ago. So uh, it's good. I mean, these are good things. Um, and I, I, it, there are days when I, I wish they weren't all moving at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, but that's that's okay. Uh, and also, in terms of the health agent, um, I actually met with uh, one of the board members tonight. They're meeting tonight downstairs. So I've not been able to get to eat any of their meetings this month <laughs> because they keep meeting when we do. Um, so we're moving on a job description for that position. Mm -hmm. I hope to get that out on the street uh, fairly soon as well. So we actually hope to have the, the new CTO uh, out next week. Um, the health agent in, the, in a week or two as well, uh, and get those people in place by spring. That's the goal. That's a lot. That is a lot. Yeah, but but again, having an HR resource has made this possible. I mean, literally, uh, you know, you, you couldn't you can't do all of it, all right? It. Yeah. Um, and once you build on one, and you have a format, you just you keep building, yep. and um, and even if it's just even if it's not done, it's it's a, it's a huge step, and then. Someone else can make the phone call to that other department and pull stuff. Mm -hmm. One of the nice things about local government in Massachusetts is people are really very friendly uh, <laughs> about sharing. You know, and in mm -hmm. fact, when I was reading the letters, the, you know, my, the transmittal letters, when I was drafting the one for this CAFR, <laughs> I found a lot, of, a lot of similar language. And I'm like, ooh. No, I didn't. I'm like, so I, I wrote my own. But, I, you know, there was some phraseology. I'm, I'm, I, I will readily admit that I borrowed. Um, Imitation is a sincere form exactly. of flattery. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a lot of flattery in Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, so I, 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 I expect um, oh, over the next week or so to finalize some of these numbers and then be able to give you some first drafts and give the advisory committee some first drafts of operational budgets uh, so we can start talking about it. Also, uh, I, uh, this is not purely budget development, so I'll take, uh, but uh, the warrant notice of intent is out. Mm -hmm. uh, they were distributed to all boards and commissions and departments. Mm -hmm. It's up on the web. Mm -hmm. And Jen is working with the press to make sure it gets in the various papers. Yeah. Uh, so if anyone wants to do a really big story on this, I'd love to talk to you. <laughs> um, actually, that was a question I was going to just ask. Is, it, it, is the public one for citizens' petitions? Yes, it's up. NOI it's is up also on the yep. website? Okay, great. In fact, um, we have a little page for the town meeting there now. You can get to it from the front page. There's mm -hmm. a couple of things up there now. There's mm -hmm. the citizen petition, NOI, notice of intent. There's the, the, the calendar, and there's a couple of links to what time it's about. Um, the, not, not our stuff, but other, other people's mm -hmm. stuff. Just um, another, just to sing Weston's praises, I have a good friend as a selectman there, and um, I found, and I sent it to Kevin, but everybody can check out on their website. They did a survey, um, a town meeting survey of the you know the town and they had like I think 700 responses um, just about time of uh, town meeting why you go why you don't go and, and all that it's just something that everybody should just kind of on their own take a look at it's very interesting I don't know that they're gonna do anything about it but it was it was just a sort of interesting feedback about you know what compels people to go and they looked at historic trends as well as just people's um, individual opinions on town meeting matters so very interesting um, anything else financially you want to ask me and yeah. I'm going to take the liberty of just making one quick statement uh, in my update and then uh, there will be anything else financially the only quick financial thing is you mentioned maybe doing another kind of public yeah. conversation that we we're not meeting the week of the 26 27 yeah we will try that so just just I'm throwing it out there to take it under advisement and we can discuss it next week I, I know that the schools are really very busy right now, um, but 
have it. I know that you've invited them several times, right. but I think it would be of a lot of interest to a lot of people in town to mm -hmm. have um, something. For and again, I've been sharing numbers with them consistently oh, for the last couple of months, so it's, you know. And I last week was at the school board meeting and they discussed their preliminary budget, mm -hmm. and that was a very interesting evening. Indeed. Um, Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Peter, did you have something? I did. Um, Peter Pesca, the advisory committee. Um, a month and a half ago or so, I asked for a review of the earned income from investments uh, as a prelude to having that be presented at uh, annual town meeting. And I was wondering if we could organize that. I noticed in your summary in the revenue section that the budget was for 19000 and we've already mm -hmm. collected 15 78% of it. So obviously we want to have a favorable effect and it may be both the base and the rates that we're enjoying or how the money's invested. But I think, you know, the, the town has never had uh, this kind of information presented to it. An investment update. Yeah, yeah and it's, it's while it's a small piece of the budget, I think it's an excellent. It's a small piece of the revenue situation. It, it is, you know, it's something everybody can understand, and I, I think disclosure on this is a is important. As I said, I asked for this, and it's in the policy. It's in the cash policy, the investment policy that they be. I think people ask me about the investments and stuff. So well, if, if you can fit it into an agenda, yeah, uh, I think it would be. Uh, I think it would yeah, be informative. For next week. Informative. Not this week. Yeah. Okay. Yes. He always says that too. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you. All right, Chris. All right. Um, what was yours? So a year ago. I sat in front of, I, I, I walked into this building for the first time as the town manager. Uh, and I want to thank the selectmen, I want to thank the staff, uh, the many volunteers who make this town work every day from the boards and committees and, and the, just the regular residents who come and, and give their time. Uh, and the entire town, every resident uh, who's been so uh, welcoming to me wherever I have been uh, for making this uh, first year here such a positive experience. Um, there's undoubtedly much more to accomplish, <laughs> including things that are not even yet on our radar screens. Uh, but I am uh, absolutely positive that, that together we'll continue to make great strides. I'm optimistic about the year ahead. I look forward to working with everyone to make 2015 as, su as successful as 2014 uh, and more for the entire year. And uh, thank you again for this. Uh, it's been a great, been a great year. Yes, thank you. I wish I had brought you. But what have you done for us lately? <laughs> 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 today. <laughs> uh, I know, that's why, but I, I also know that, the, yes, that's exactly right. What have you done for me lately? When I was in radio, you know, you, you got off the air and it didn't matter. You were back on the air in 30 it's minutes so and you just got to be ready. <laughs> so a little less intense here, but not much. So uh, um, thank you. I, I think, does anyone have anything that they uh, that they want to touch base on? Uh, I know we're really just financial coverage. Is there anything you want to touch no, base on? No, yes. Go yes, actually there is. I, um, I just, an, an update, it doesn't have to be current, uh, but there's two elements to it uh, with respect to uh, a specific request for, uh, from the Lambert's Lane residents with, uh, with regard to their the road condition. But that also triggers a separate discussion with, uh, with respect to a private way uh, policy, which we we have not we, we have made no substantial progress yet toward constructing such a policy. So the first part of it is what's up with what's up with Lambert's Lane. Um, the second part is when can we queue up that discussion? The the first actually it's, it's very funny. I was having much the same conversation with someone else today. Um, uh, I am going to be reaching out to the folks. Uh, so what, last I left it, um, we had had a se several meetings. I had some meetings with the folks at the golf course, and I had some uh, meetings with residents. And I also had some meetings with VPW staff, and they were able to get in there and do some pre-winter uh, patching to make sure that buses and ambulances don't come over that cause some trouble. And that seems to have, I think, been okay. Uh, I'm sure if it's not, I'll get a call tomorrow, and that's fine, because I haven't driven on the road in, in about a moment. Um, but the last I had, reports I got were people were okay. That we had done some of the, the, the patches. Um, the re, the couple of residents that I met had been looking down one, one avenue to, to see if the road really had been or has been a public way. 
mm-hmm. and they're going through the records. And as I've discovered today, I was looking for something else entirely, and you know, sometimes think you, you get surprised. You dig back in the records, you find things that, uh, that you didn't know were there. Um, so I want to uh, close the loop and find out where they are on that process. Um, I've also had a preliminary conversation with the folks at the, with the golf course management. I met with the GM um, in the late fall, and I want to follow up with them too and, and see as we head towards spring what we might be able to do. One of the other bigger pieces that's parallel to this, uh, which we're, 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 that Brian and I are talking about with the Capital Budget Committee, is, is funding and analysis of our public way system to know exactly what our effectively our, I, I was calling it ROPEP before, but it's uh, you know, a road, uh, you know, our, 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 our road uh, on unfunded, uh, unfunded liability, yeah. so ro- roll. Um, um, because um, we don't know, honestly. I mean, you know, Carl tells me, I mean, Carl knows these roads and his crew knows these roads great. Some of them are really well built on gravel beds and all, and some are sitting on clay and some are sitting on rock. Nice. Um, mm-hmm. But we do need to have a better assessment as to what the, the unfunded liability is for our existing road system. Mm-hmm. That way we can have a better conversation about what we can absorb. Because, I mean, again, whether people, whether town meeting wants to absorb it or not, you want to know which, how much it's going to cost and what kind of resources are available. So I think that needs to queue up at the same time. So we're recommending that be considered. I know we started the conversations about doing that. Because mm-hmm. I think that piece of information is very critical as well. Uh, and at the same time, we want to talk about how to queue up. Uh, we've looked at a couple internally. A couple of other communities have these. I mean, again, the state law is what it is, but they have a simple couple of page. Here's what you want to. Here's what you want to do if you want to get a road accepted that isn't otherwise a public way. And I, I think we can spread that out a little bit more. But I think I. I, I so we, I think we can talk about that in a future meeting. Uh, does that kind of answer your question? Yes. Yeah. I. I just. Um, I will. I mean, this has been on. A, one of my top lists, um, and I'll let Martha say something. I just want to keep it as as a total Chris update. I don't want us weighing in on the topic at all because it's not posted on the agenda, right. and I don't like to veer off too far. But I'm just giving you're giving updates. us yes. an update, and that's fine. Yeah, and with an update, uh, I just want you to be aware of other roads up in the hillside and so forth, and that uh, if there must be some place when uh, all pastor tried to do it, because you have to have the with the road and you have to do a, a mm-hmm. lot of stuff and I agree with you a lot of the roads the re- the bed is not good and that's part of the reason we're having divided things that's all and we need to know I think I think again it's one of those foundational Sorry, pieces of information one. the better we know I mean we need to know we need to know what we have to do to keep our current system in place much that's less right. to yeah, expand really it uh, and again I, I again I'm, I'm I'm with the town however it wants to go yeah. forward um, but we need to have that information and we will have that conversation soon. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Thank Anybody? Uh, okay. Do you have a second? Then? No. Okay. No. okay. Right. Um, so we have two sets of minutes to approve, December 9th and yeah. December 16th. Yeah. Yeah. actually <laughs> really good minutes um, we are going to um, do approvals next week for the executive session minutes oh, the executive oh, session oh, good, town council has reviewed everything yeah wonderful. Um, wonderful. but two to just two quick things on this which I'll make notes um, in reading the minutes from the 9th and the 16th um, one of them was again some just something for an update next week Chris is if there's an update on treats pond because in the minutes on December 9th mentioned that there may be some action necessary at town meeting. Mm. Yes. Okay. And yes. then the second thing that I noticed that said action for town meeting. Oh no, this isn't um, action for town meeting. It's just whether we should probably have a conversation about whether tablets would work for this board. Um, yes. Um, yes. No, 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 the Treats Pond is actually heading is in front of capital budget. It's part of the ongoing conversations. The Treats Pond fix the yes. change. Yeah, so okay. it's going through the regular it's process. Cool. And we've been meeting with residents and actually had a very good meeting the other day. So, uh, and it's ahead. something that likely will queue up as an article. Mm-hmm. As an yeah, article. well, it'll be part of the capital article. budget. It's just going to be part of the capital budget. Yeah. 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 So mm-hmm. okay. We basically got a price. They're just working out the details. Yeah. 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 It's going along, actually. <coughs> same plan, Joe. Okay. Well, yeah. Does it yeah, same plan we talked about last year. Does anybody have any... And the tap, by the way, so Chief Sylvia is actually testing out 
we purchased two tablets for his department, and he's using them for this G this, this great GIS system. So his, he can go out in his vehicles, and in fact, they responded to a fire earlier today. Um, he can, the, the navigator in, in the passenger seat pops up, and you can see when you're going, where the where the hydrants are, where the Knox boxes are, where any propane tanks are, if there are, and how you wow, get to the property. It's now all visual. They used to literally carry it around in little spiral notebooks they got mm -hmm. from their pocket. Um, hey, whatever works, right? So, yeah. uh, oh, but so he's testing out these these computer these uh, these tablets. They're, they're yeah, having to be a Sony good. product. And if they work, we'll roll them out. Uh, we'll, we'll, you'll you'll be in the next test because um, we were all, what we've also set up, which, which is not live yet, is a um, I don't know if it's called a Dropbox. Eh? So forgive me if I'm te technologically illiterate on some of these things. Um, the all the, yeah, mm -hmm. sit, sitting out there, we do it for Con Conservation Commission now, so mm -hmm. they can go and pick up their stuff on a central site and download it. We could do the same thing with you. Uh, you can go to a site, download it to your tablet or to your laptop. Yeah, whatever it's, you a want. Central, it's a central database. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so it we're, we're using it for conservation. We actually have a site that's not active yet for select the same thing. We still release the information publicly, but then you can just download it at your leisure. It'll go up, and you can. And we don't. We wouldn't necessarily have to run a packet to everybody. You have your own deliverable packet. You can download it anytime you want. And we can do that for other committees too, um, as uh, as this. Can can you have like the policeman deliver the tablet to my house? Once <laughs> we'll work. On, yeah, sure. Yeah. They can come here. We'll download it to you. And we'll deliver it. Then we got to take it back at, uh, on Tuesdays. I feel bad out. for Tracy scrambling on Fridays. To <laughs> well, she says to just push your button to download her, but yeah, like the jets. Yeah, she would be very easy. happy, I'm sure. Yeah. Okay. Any changes on December 9th? I didn't, I didn't find anything. I went to the Okay. Is there a motion to approve the minutes from December 9th? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, on December 16th minutes, any changes? Mm -hmm. I have a small, very small thing. Um, mm -hmm. Who made the motion? I had. Who made the motion on the event discussion? Uh, McCarthy. Is no, I moved it. Where is it? It doesn't say, but up and above it says Slick McQueen. It's a, yeah, I know, but so it should be added that you that made the motion. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yep. So motion by Slackman yeah. Quigley. Seconded. I read the motion. Um, Tracy, these are just little things. Yep. Um, on the first page, mm -hmm. the second to the last line in the selectman comment it just was just for clarification it, it was one of the hull selectmans it says um you're terrified it was the brother of one of the oh, selectmen. okay yeah okay yeah. um the eagle scout project at yeah. the end we'll check into i don't know if it should say it or mm -hmm. oh okay um, oh okay the very end of the, the permitting day. issues. Yeah, I'll add something to finish yeah. that up. Mm -hmm. I meant to look it up in the dictionary, but I didn't. Dialogue, D I A. Where is it? What page? UE. UE. Um, page two, event discussion, line four in the middle. I wonder if it's acceptable. Yeah, yeah that's what I didn't know whether it was acceptable. Check it. No. So I know, I spell check, but probably. Well, it might be an acceptable usage. Um, that's, that's why I wanted to look it up, I'll and I forgot it. to. Mm -hmm. And then on page three in the common policy, yep. there are three co commons that I thought should be capitalized. Okay, when I'm talking about common. Okay, I, I see you saying the common policy. Yeah, yep. common, yeah. Okay. The common is currently used. Only if it's average. <laughs> the common, yeah. It's used it's special. That was it. Okay. Okay. I actually have one little that's all right. thing. Back under the events discussion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where it says the motion was as follows. Yeah, that should be a, a colon, not a, a colon. Semicolon. You're right. You're right. <laughs> if no one had changes, I was going to let it slide. Yeah, that's <laughs> all right. That's okay. You and I are the picky um, okay. Is there a motion to approve the minutes for December 16th as amended? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain. Excuse me, abstaining because oh, no. he was absent. I wasn't mm -hmm. there. So it's three to nothing. Three zero one. One. One extension. Okay. All right. That is it. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.